final, 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 final day for our MAPS Super Bundle and RGB Bundle promotion. So this month, if you enroll in the RGB Bundle, which is MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic, that's nine months of exercise programming, you'll get for free the No BS Six-Pack Formula, the Fasting and Nutrition Survival Guide. Now, if you enroll in the MAPS Super Bundle, you get all of that plus... MAPS Prime, which teaches you how to prime your workouts, and MAPS Anywhere, which is our equipment-free MAPS program. It's a great bridge between MAPS programs or even one you can do when you're on the road or you don't feel like going to the gym. Uh, And it's all at an even greater discount because it's our super bundle. So enroll in one of those two, you get a bunch of free stuff. The No BS Six-Pack Formula, Fasting Guide, Nutrition Guide. This is the last day for this particular promotion. You can find it all at mindpumpmedia.com. If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. The vaporizer is different. What do you I, mean it's different? The I mean, way it feels? No, yeah. Different. It's like, tell me. You, this, I mean, I would love to actually, I, I don't know if you know, maybe you know a little bit. And I can get high. Well, I know I know some, and I'd be curious to hear what you think. So, Thanks, th- Justin. Yeah. A pipe, a joint, a, a bong, and a vaporizer. Walk into a bar. An edible. Oh, sorry. <laughs> right. <laughs> all, f- all five of those. Uh, different high. To different high. Okay, so. Fascinating, right? So so let's start with the easy ones, right? Hmm. I love it when I pretend I'm an expert on Here something. Here we go. Let's <laughs> right. break well, it down. I, so I know a little bit, right, that like well, what's going to, the easy somewhere. ones are going to be comparing like the edible to like the smoke, right? Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. you know, when we, when we and that's why the edible is so powerful is when you digest it and you get it yeah. into your bloodstream, that way you get so much more than when you ingest it through your lungs. Right. So there's definitely a higher percentage, which is why what happens to people is they eat an edible and it smashes you in the face and it just, it just Increases, uh, and increases. It, yeah, it ramps as up. your body's digesting it, and more and more of it is getting absorbed. And then you go where, eat food, and you're like, "Oh my god, there it is again!" Yeah, but when you smoke it or vaporize it, it instantly gets into your bloodstream because so, your lungs. So. Yeah. So here's the deal. So, uh, and I had to look this up, but I can't, it's way I less percentage. That. It's like twenty to it's like twenty to twenty compared to seventy. Right. So there's a certain. So two things when you when you smoke or all in all inhaled versions of THC, there's a limit to how much you can or how high you can get the THC in your in your blood. Uh, there's a, there's pretty much a limit. Now, the way you can kind of surpass that limit is by doing like concentrates like wax and uh, shatter and that kind of shit. But still, there's, there's a certain type of limit. That limit is much higher uh, with edibles. So when you take an edible, mm. you can get higher concentrations of THC in your blood, number one. Number two, when you eat THC... Uh, tetrahydrocannabidiol, I think that's the name. Sure, let's do that. Cannabidiol? Yeah. Okay. Anyway, when you ingest it, it converts, the liver converts it to 11-hydroxy-THC, which is slightly more uh, potent in its effects. Some people would say more psychedelic. Uh, right. In fact, lots, uh, high, high doses of THC edible. It's a different chemical compound at that point. It, and it lasts longer. Yeah. So, you well, know, and, and the way you, you sp- explain this to people like layman's terms is explain the difference between c- sativa and indicas because the sativas are going to have a higher percentage of that versus like the indicas. And that difference of that high is an explanation well, you know what's of how funny? you feel. You know what's funny? So I, I, I've done a lot of reading on this particular subject. And what's funny about the sativa indica debate is that they thought it was because Indica's had more CBD, or unless they thought it, that that was the case, but that's not, it's not true. In fact, some of the highest CBD plants are actually sativas. What probably is happening is it's not- It's the ratio. Well, it's not just that. It's Because it's, you, you can have a sativa with the same ratio as an Indica, get different effects. You can have Indica's that, that react, that uh, make you feel like you're taking, drink, having a sativa and vice versa. So what they're finding is that the terpenes- uh, that are in cannabis that give it its smells. There's other chemicals in cannabis that give the way it looks and feels that may have uh, other effects on you. So it See, depends I'm, on those I things. Would be, I would be ve- I'd be very interested to dive into these studies because one of the things being in the industry that, and I kind of we kind of talked about this a while back, and I remember we when we all first started hanging out, this is great because this is our 500th episode. Of 500! Week. Oh, yeah. Number so 500! We'll, you're, you're giving me some memories of when we first yeah. start. We first met. We started hanging rusty. out, and and uh, one of the things that you and I hit it off with right away was you were like another really intelligent fitness guy that I knew that actually smoked weed, 
And I thought that was really cool. Like right away, yeah. I was like, I, "You just don't." Now I've met plenty of fucking stoners in my life. Right? <laughs> <laughs> it's not, yeah, and I've, they didn't impress me. Let's just I, put it that well, way. And I've, I've met plenty of stoners that did impress me, but none that were really intelligent and in fitness. And that was like, oh, right. So right away, that was like an, an instant connection, right? Yeah. And uh, and then when we started hanging out, we, then then mind pump happens, and everything like that. And you know, Sal loves to talk about. We love to talk about this side of the business, even though we don't record a lot of it and talk about it because obviously we don't want a show that's about that because we're not about that. And that's not. Uh, it's a very small. We percentage. ain't about that life. It's a small percentage of our life, but it, we'd be lying to say it's not a hobby, right? Or it's not something that you're intrigued by. I'm fascinated. I was in the industry. In I've, bit, I've read a lot about yeah. it. I've I've first hand grown. I've done everything. You've been right? on. You you're balls deep. You were in the business side of it. Yeah. Uh, my, well, I was. In, I was on not only just the business side, bro. I I had to teach. I'm self-taught on how to grow and grow the highest level of well, shit that that's, ever. Right. That that's what I mean. Like ever came in this your, area. Your dude. hands were in it, yeah. like understanding how to grow it with the business, the, fertilizers, the market, chemicals, all sell. That. You know the, the the process, the business side. The, you, that you, whole business side for me, I was in it because. Uh, it treated Did you start, my, yeah, say research for your cancer? Well, for your, I, your, uh, was my your mother-in-law, mother-in-law so right? It was, uh, so first it was um, uh, for myself because I, I, I discovered that it actually uh, helped me quite a bit with my symptoms from my gut issues. Right, and that yes. made me, that made me really, really fascinated in it because before that I didn't, it wasn't a, it wasn't a subject that I even cared about and I barely had ever tried it. It wasn't a big deal. But when I realized that it helped me with my symptoms, I became very fascinated. And then when I had someone very close to me who was stricken with cancer, what, you know, I just went crazy with research and cannabis has cr- some insane anti-cancer properties. Well, this is what I so mean. I really this is what it. I mean by what, where we really connected. And, that, and I guess this is the deeper part of what I was saying. And it sounds so surface to say, oh, he's a smart guy. He's fitness. And that, that's why we hit it off. It's also the story behind it because you're, to me, you're also another example of somebody who, um, you weren't. You weren't a stoner. You weren't somebody who smoked a lot of weed or anything like that at all. I was. I didn't even touch a drug or have sex till I was after twenty years old. So God damn. I would. And then not only that, it's but it's like the, two atoms, a boring atom, <laughs> yeah, fun atom. And then my, <laughs> and then my first experience with uh, marijuana was when I was twenty one or twenty two. I'd already I'd already moved here to the Bay Area and I was going back to my hometown. And at that point in my life, I'd figured like. Because I was always an athlete, good kid, all that shit right there. I was in church three times a week. Like, I was totally square. I bet a lot of people don't know this. But uh, I was that that guy. I was in, you know, my my parents thought I was going to be a Weren't, pastor one day. I was just going to say, wasn't yeah. that one of your goals? Yeah. No, it wasn't a personal goal of mine at all. I, I never wanted, I never saw that or thought that my, I, they, I think my my family wanted that. Okay. You know what I'm saying? They saw, they saw. Um, Sounds a lot like Sam Kinison. You, you guys know him? No, no. Oh, comedian. No, that, oh, dude. So you could just see, by the way, that he's so charismatic and he's like, He's that loud. Uh, he has that preacher type voice. He was a preacher before he became a comedian. Oh no shit! Yeah, yeah. So oh, I didn't know that. A lot of his comedy was like you know him kind of poking and jabbing at that. How whole is he good? Process. Sam Kinison. He a was legend. amazing. Oh yeah. really? He died. Yeah, I mean, early. it was. It, I, I feel it's saw dated him. because back in the I've day, seen him, was, I just don't remember his name. Yeah, he was kind of raunchy. He, but he was, uh, he was well, hilarious. That's weird. I follow a lot of comedy. That's he weird. was like eighties, nineties. He was yeah. a legend, and then he died. He was like the rock star comedian. He's the one that's like. He comes yeah. out and just like yells. At Don't you remember face. that comedian? He had long hair. He wore like a big black trench coat. And oh, oh, that guy, oh! That guy. Yeah. And, he, and he had kind of a chubby face a little bit. God, yeah. I can't picture. Yeah. I'd, I'd have to see. You know, there's him oh, and who's that? Maniac. Other? Gallagher is an old guy that I used but to who's watch. Who's that other back. comedian? Gallagher. Yeah, Gallagher. I, I, smashing. I watched. I've seen I, Richard Pryor days. Eddie Murphy. Uh, I mean, that was all the stuff that I watched growing up and shit. I was all in. Who uh, was that one comedian who? Uh, he was another comedian that died early, but he was very. Philosoph- philosophical with his comedy also. Oh, Mitch Hedberg? No. no. Wait, wait. Oh, I'm sorry. You're talking about philosophical. Yes. Yeah. God damn it. Hmm. What was his name? Oh, 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 oh. I don't yeah, know, yeah, but yeah, I, yeah. I like George Carlson. George, uh, Carlin. 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 Carlin is one, or but Carlin, it was another right? guy. Is it Carlin? Or is it Carlin? Oh. Carlin. Carlin. It was it. another guy. that He always did like underlining political jokes. I really liked his humor. Yeah, um, he was deep. I liked, uh, who else did I listen to a lot? So uh, I mean, Eddie Murphy's what made oh, me Bill love, fall in love, though. Bill Eddie Murphy, oh, Ron, Eddie Hicks, Murphy. Yeah. Who? See, that's Kinnison right there. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I totally remember this. Yeah. Wow, he was a preacher first. Yeah. 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 No yeah. shit. Yeah. That makes me more interested to listen to his comedy oh, like now. Because southern I'm, kind of preacher, like yeah. real, like uh, charismatic. You yeah. Know? So my yeah. family. So that the point of me saying that, right? My family thought I was heading that direction. My point of saying all that was like I would be like the furthest person. So I used to I would talk bad about marijuana weed and i would and say you know people that did it were losers i mean i was that person totally mm-hmm. if i was being honest right 
And so, but then I got into my twenties and now I'm like, I'm over here in the Bay area. I'm working, I'm working seven days a week for most, most of the time. Um, and I'm on my way, I bought my house by the time I was 21. So this is me on that path. Like I was super focused. I wasn't in the bars drinking a lot, doing shit like that, like a normal 21 year old. And my, uh, my parents, like they, they always thought I was going to go to the preacher. I never did. But then I get to this point where I'm coming back into town. I'm coming to see my buddies that I hadn't seen in a while that I grew up with in, in high school. And a couple of them, I hung out with all groups, right? So I was a jock as far as in high school, but I hung out with all different ever, you know, you name it. Like I, that was one of the, I got along with a lot of people mm-hmm. cause I didn't discriminate. I was a poor kid growing up and I was, I felt blessed just to be hanging out with anybody and have a good time. Right. So I didn't judge anybody. So I don't know why I was fucking trailing off there. I smoked too much. I think, right there. <laughs> no, I go back into town. Right. And then, uh, the, I have some of these guys I'm getting together with and they're, they're smoking and I go, you know what? Like I ain't got to be anywhere tomorrow. Like, you know, at this point, I, yeah. I feel like I'm responsible enough. I could try this. And I tried it, right? And I and I remember thinking like- Is this yeah. the time that freaked you out? Yeah. Oh, was dude. it now, was it an edible that you had? No, I smoked. But uh. but here's the thing, though. And I remember this because I drank when I was young. I was I drank. I had I was a horrible rich. experience, too. Yeah. But so, Me and too. what I, when I like an idiot, like what I did was I said, okay, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to do it all the way. I want to get high. Yeah, I want to get high. Like Because <laughs> people were telling me, oh, you might not even get high your first time. You know, like. Why is What is up with that myth? I said, is it That is myth? such that a is, stupid is, myth. It is a stupid myth. Boy. I don't even think people say that anymore. Well, there are. Sometimes you hear people that say that, that they didn't even, but that's probably because they, but they did the smart thing, which is probably only smoke. a little bit, yeah, yeah a tiny bit. Yeah. And they were afraid they didn't, inha- they, didn't know, they didn't know how to inhale because they'd never inhaled something in their life before, right? <laughs> so that's probably what really fucking happened. Yeah. But now, not me. I'm fucking. I'm gonna do this. So, so. Wait, how many? What'd you do? Like five? Oh, hits? Bro, we went around. There was like eight of us, and we they're just like passing a bowl around the entire time. And, and I just blazing, blazing. Oh, I, I, I was the only one still going. I was by myself. I'm like, I'm still? not. Gonna, I, I, what oh I did was God. I smoked until I thought I felt it. And, but you don't realize that <laughs> you know, it takes like 10 oh, minutes. Oh, yeah. To and, you're, and you know what? It's like when you're sitting still, right? So even though it's smoking, you it, it hits you fast, you still, it doesn't really catch up. <laughs> oh, bro. No, it was what ter- It was awful. Really it was strategy. an awful experience for me. I Is this when you thought, when you said you were on the bed with yes, the covers over your yes. head? Yes. And it was, I no joke. <laughs> <laughs> my my best friend at the time, right? He had a I, things were replaying in my head. Like I kept like seeing it over and over. I felt like I was hallucinating. I wasn't hallucinating. You, no, 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 you probably did get a little psychedelic. Yeah, you it can was, get psychedelic with for because yeah. things kept repeating. Like I was laying on the bed, and then my friend would come in the room, and he'd say like, "Hey, dude, are you hungry?" And, and then, "Hey, dude, are you hungry?" And "Hey, dude," and I keep seeing like, it. Whoa. You know, it fucking tripped oh me. Oh my up. god, you're in a time loop. Well, and it got so bad. Real talk, right? I'm 20 some years old. I walked to my best friend that grew up with me, and I go, "Hey." Dude, you got to get me out of here. Like, I, or I'm gonna call my mom. Like, I was like, <laughs> I was like, I was ready to call my mom to come pick what me up. What would you tell your mom? So, I smoked weed. Well, yeah, whatever. I was, I was that scared. You know, it, it, I was true. I was genuinely scared, and that scared me to be away. I didn't. I was so anti marijuana because did of you that hear, experience. Did, have you guys oh, ever man. heard that video he, uh, he, of that cop? Who, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. the brownies. I, the so brownies, yeah. why that is so hilarious to me great. is because I totally relate to that. Yeah. I could. I that is. You know why that's such a powerful video? Because that and it went so viral. Because that shit is real. Yeah, that's no. fucking. That's not like a stage thing yeah. that someone did. Again. Like that shit the, really the panic is is insane. Yes. And it, yeah. and you could I could when you hear that I'm laughing because it's hilarious because I can relate and I've been through it and some of that. But you're going like holy shit. That's exactly how Do you I know felt. why that- like so scared like. Uh-huh. And he and my buddy's like holding me like he yeah. fucking two twenty year grown ass <laughs> man like. Oh. And he's like, he's uh, like, and every time I talk, because I'm trying to talk myself out of it, and he's like, Shh, don't talk. It's going to make it worse. Just <laughs> lay there. And he, if it wasn't for him, I fucking probably would have took myself to the hospital. I was so scared. Yeah. So I was like, <laughs> talk about wanting nothing to do with marijuana, bro. All Dude, the way through my 20s into, it took me till. I, so I had a horrible experience uh, in high school. Same thing. Same exact, almost the same exact story where I was going to try it. And I was with my girlfriend. And my girlfriend's friend, so she had another, there was another girl there and her boyfriend, so there's four of us. And I thought to myself, like, if I'm gonna do this, I wanna feel it, right? Like, I'm, I'm gonna do this, I totally wanna feel it. So I took like hit after hit after hit. <sighs> oh, and I won't, no. I'll never forget, man. I took a hit, I'm sitting in the back of a car, I took a hit, and then it hit me all at once. And I went back and I gave the pipe over to, I think it was my girlfriend, and I'm sitting there and I'm like, uh, f- Fuck. And <laughs> next thing you know, I'm in the back and I'm super quiet. Now we're driving around and doing shit and the entire time, every car next to me, I'm like, 
they're going to call the cops. Yeah. <laughs> they're looking in here. I'm, I, 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 they know I'm high. Then we get to a, a, like a convenience store. Everybody's like, let's go get some food. And I'm like, I'll just stay in the car. <laughs> I stay in the car the whole time. Yeah. Then I had my girlfriend's hand and I put it on my heart. And I'm like, can you feel my heartbeat? Is it beating? <laughs> Are you sure it's beating? She's like, yes, your heart is beating. I'm like, I don't feel it beating. I didn't process in my head that if my heart wasn't beating, I'd be dead. But uh, I, I, I stayed away from it from pretty much from then till... You know, I started reading more about oh it. Oh my god! You had a bad experience. Well, I did, and yeah. I, I'll talk Not about that, my high school. One uh, first. I was gonna say the yeah. one that you. Nah, that was later on. Yeah, no, <laughs> <laughs> that was great. In high school, it was like I, I was same, same kind of situation as Adam. Very straight laced. Didn't go to any parties. You know, just stick with like the athletics and and uh, hanging out and whatnot. But I was always all my friends around me like they would smoke and stuff, and so they would always kind of oh, jab at me. They wouldn't really peer pressure me, but they jab at me and stuff. And That's so, just like how my buddies were. Yeah, same thing. Not peer pressure. They were just, just kinda... always is always in front of me, right? And it didn't bother me or anything. And then uh, you know, and then finally I was like, all right. And so I started to uh, I, I tried it and. Uh, at first, like I just did the whole trick, right? The trick where you you kind of it smoke mouth. it in your mouth and you you just pu- you know puff it out like you're like you're smoking like a cigar or something, yeah. and they they started picking up on this because I, I did it a couple times, <laughs> you know, to kind of fake, save myself. You fake I was faking puffer. it, bro. You fake puffer. I was you. faking it. And, and Hashtag they, fake puffer. Yeah, dude, that's going yeah. on next they, week. They for actually, sure. yeah, <laughs> they actually started calling me uh, Bill Clinton. Ah, yeah. Oh shit! Sure. <laughs> like, oh, you Bill Clinton. And so I was like, ah, whatever. I guess they're on to me, you know. And so I was at this party, and uh, this is like the end of my senior year, I think. And so I was like, ah, I'm gonna let loose a little bit. Had had some drinks, and and you know had a good buzz going, <laughs> and they were smoking and all that. And like, come on, you know, like you've, you've been avoiding it the whole time. I'm like, fine, whatever. And so I smoked it. I wasn't like you. I wasn't. I wasn't like trying to like get a bunch of them in. But I let it all. And I took the like the biggest hit ever because norm because before that I would take these huge drags, you know, to to then uh, puff it out. Yeah, so they could see. Yeah, yeah, so So they could see it. So it looked like a huge amount of you know smoke in the air. And so (laughs) this time I finally I did the same thing right, and then I just it all went into the lungs, and I was just like. Oh, and then just start <laughs> coughing like an insane amount of coffee. Now, was dude. that the first time you ever truly inhaled something? Yes. At this point, too. So yeah. you didn't try like cigarettes before or anything like that as a kid? No. Um, yeah, that was actually after, and I fucking hated cigarettes. But uh, yeah, I that was the first time I really had inhaled anything. And so, so I tried to play it all cool. I'm like, ah, I'm good. Just give me some water. And then it started happening. You know, and, and I was like already kind of drunk already. And so I just started getting really paranoid and like any noise or anything. I was just like, oh, oh, oh shit. And I thought there was like, it was the whole classic thing where I thought like the cops were outside God damn it, and they're ready that. for me. And then I, I was like trying to go to bed and I couldn't sleep. And I kept thinking all these crazy thoughts. And then I started to see things. Like I, I, I literally was like, I know how I'm going to die. What? And- <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I was like, I'm gonna die in a car crash. And my head's gonna smash in the window. <laughs> the and I was like, oh my god! <laughs> and then finally, I woke up in the morning and and I was okay. But I seriously thought I was gonna die. That's, you know, that, it, did that scare you away for a long time or what? A long time. Yeah, that was me. You so, know, it, it stimulates a part of the brain. This is what people don't know. There's a part of the brain that controls fear. And it actually activates that, which is why one of the side effects of marijuana paranoia. use is paranoia. Yeah, no, totally. This is, so this so is paranoid. this is why this is one of the things I'm serious that like really I think uh, connected you and I because we, we were had we, we, no we had very <laughs> similar stories yeah. that led us to like learn about cannabis. Yeah, like yeah. so mine like so I was an anti guy right, and then I'm training this client. Now I'm in my late twenties, and I'm training a client who and this is right when like. Like marijuana was just coming on. Like this is before any clubs were in the Bay Area. This was at this at this time. There's only uh, there's Harborside in Oakland, and uh, I think Blue Sky. It just started. Yeah, it just started. So those that have been around or know very much about all that stuff, like Blue Sky, uh, Harborside, they were they were like the only two clubs that were anywhere within. And L. A. was the first place, right, for California. So. I'm training a guy who tells me that he's going to open six and that he knows somebody. And we're late. We're going to leave names out, right? For but he knows <laughs> this somebody, time, right? Yeah. Yeah, this time, we walk, <laughs> I've learned, it only took you me four, enough of your buddies. <laughs> <in> your bus, <laughs> it only took me four hundred episodes to fucking finally get five, that. Five hundred. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> we're on five hundred. Yeah, well, I'm just now getting it. So. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's right. 
No, seriously. Uh, so these guys, uh, he, he tells me, um, you know, hey, I've got these connections and I know that they're, they're gonna be a, there's going to be a moratorium on 12 and I'm going to have six. And he, he's offering me a job to manage them. And I'm like, dude, I don't know anything about marijuana. And he's like, I don't need you to. Like, I've seen the way you, you manage the club and the way you are with people and this and that. And he's like, I need somebody with that leadership skill, right? And I'm like, oh, you know, I, at that time in my career too, I love fitness uh, and I loved my job, but I was, I, at this point, I was over the company. I'd been over the company. You were just for, bored. Yeah, I've been over the company for almost three years now. I, I was no longer growing. Um, I could half-ass my job and I could crush all my competitors. Mm-hmm. And it was just, but it wasn't fun because they took all that away when they took the trophies away. They took the comp plans and they got rid of bonuses for doing really and you, well. And you felt blackballed. You knew you probably weren't going to move yeah, up. Yeah, and, and, even, and at that point in my life, I'd seen... Um, my boss and my boss's boss, like I knew how much money they made in their position and what it entailed. I, I was pulling for you to leave when I left. Man. Yeah, well, I know. I, I, I so all my guys, yeah. right? So I had, I mean, I want, and that was for me. That was it, right? When I finally seen like the last, I would built an incredible team. That the one that Justin was a part of. I mean, we had, we had a staff that was fucking the shit. Like, I mean, we literally had one. Remember, we had twelve trainers at one time, and we were crushing yeah. like San Ramon and all the biggest, yeah, destroying yeah. everybody. Yeah, and we were doing that, and everybody was everyone was a master trainer, good looking, fit, very smart. Good, I mean, all talented. Like the worst guy was better than the the best team or best guy, average guy on another place, right? And I was I didn't ha- I didn't work very hard at this point. I I understood how to lead, right? So, but I was bored. I was so bored because I knew I didn't. I no longer wanted my boss's boss's job, but yet I was making great money. I came in whenever I wanted to. I left whenever I wanted to. I took two hour lunch breaks, and like I said, I still was still beating out. Any, so my job was super secure, and I made six figures, and I had a four hundred one k. It was really hard to pull me out of there. But this guy comes to me and tells me that okay, here's the deal. Now the business side of me, I've always been a businessman. I've always done other things on the side and, and on whatever I was that I was doing. So. I'm going like, okay, I see the direction that cannabis is going. I'm very interested in it, even though I'm anti it. So that's when I began my diving into it. Like, I didn't know anything really. Like, I'm like, let me learn about it. And the deeper I read, I was like, actually, there might, but before that, I thought it was a bunch of bullshit. I really did. I really thought like the marijuana, trying to get marijuana to get passed was this hippie bullshit that so, there's. That's what I thought. I thought, yeah. I thought they were using the medical route just because they wanted. Another drug to be just like alcohol. Or, alcohol yeah. has the same history. If yeah. you know, if you go all the way back to how alcohol got passed, it's a very similar transition. We didn't just go from alcohol being illegal and being legal. No, no it was, went state by state. Yeah, it went uh, state after- by state. They had dispensaries just like they have with marijuana, and it's and the same thing. You go to a doctor, he'd write you a script, yeah. and it's literally the same. And you so like if if you know anything about history, and then you you understand business, you can really see where this is going. Yeah. And now I had an opportunity to be a part of that, and I was like, okay, that's fucking and then, interesting. And then you learned about you yeah. know what I find. Interesting <laughs> is, and I, I I knew this. I know this about uh, about you guys because I think this is true for most entrepreneurs. Your biggest fear or enemy is boredom. Totally. Oh yeah. Boredom. One hundred percent. Like you could be. Let me ask you guys a question. I so connected with Mike Bledsoe when he made this statement. Did he make that on the show or not? When I know we talked outside. Where <laughs> did he? I know make, kind, of, kind of gray area. There. I can't remember if he said it on the show or Recording not. Recording or not. He's but he uh, he he made a statement about how. There was a point in his life where he loved to build something up just so he could burn it down, mm-hmm. and I was like, "Oh God, that's I did." It was like so hit yeah, home for me. That. I'm all, it's that's, like one of my biggest fears. Like one of my biggest fears is to be in doing something and, and just and it's and I mean it could be. Here's the thing: it could be going great. It could be making <clears throat> tons of money, yeah. lots of security, easy life. And then to find myself like bored. Oh my uh, god! Yeah, yeah, for sure. Oh my god, dude! I, I remember myself. like too though. As, as far as like the cannabis is concerned, like for me, like I was I avoided it like crazy. Like after that 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 experience <laughs> I had, right? And then um, you know, even you guys since the hesitancy when I first we started the show and, yeah. and all that, I'm like, oh, I don't want to be associated we with broke that kind you of down. stuff. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> we were well, down. <laughs> you know what it was? I mean, it was for sure. But it, but but Close some of that was all day. You know, you guys. Are it's hard close. when you, it's hard you're when you're a bunch of closers. It's hard when you're close all closers. day long. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. But uh, it, it's the health component. Yeah. So it's 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 all that that really kind of uh, turned my perspective a little bit, and and I had. I hadn't heard about all those like very specific medicinal properties mm. that it presented. And so I just, 
from then, like really like getting into that and then having more people on the show to verify this. And then, uh, you know, all these different studies that, you know, you pointed out, Sal, and like your experience and all kinds of stuff. And then, uh, you know, that really started to kind of shift the energy. And now we see, I mean, America is responding as well. Dude, so you know what? It's, you know it's what? crazy. Yeah, that's because of mind pump. Yeah, we did that. <laughs> yeah, right. The five hundredth episode. Yeah. We're, yeah. I I was super we're fast. So you know, you talk about being closers, sales guys, right? How funny is this? The reason why I started to really dive deep into it was because when you came, so when I went around and I saw the club, so I was uh, two of the first four to hit San Jose. I was part of the uh, what they used to call the MC12, which was the original 12 clubs that was paired up with Harborside and uh, Steve D'Angelo, who's the, like the, one of the biggest names yeah. in, the, in the area with, with uh, you know medical marijuana and being an advocate of that, right? So those guys, I mean, I've been around since the beginning and I got to see all these, these club owners and how they ran their place. And I was like, oh man, these are all a bunch of hippies. <laughs> like and they're not sales guys they're yeah. not closers and i i saw the business we opportunity always you. through this like yeah. i didn't have the i'll be the first to admit it i didn't have this pure reason of getting into cannabis whatsoever i wasn't like oh i just hit the plant medicine and i you know i went out no i thought that was a hippie stoner thing and but as i dove deeper and i learned more and more so i did it because i would i wanted people to be able to come in because i would go to all these other places and nobody did this when until we were doing this was and actually like help people figure out which strain would be best for them based off their symptoms. Like nobody did that. Mm -hmm. No one, when we first came in, nobody did that. And my two buddies that did this business with me, we all saw that right away and we're like, wow. And you know, there's not a lot of, it's the same way we look at the fitness industry. There's not a lot of really, really, there's not a lot of really, really smart business and like, like technical in, in their field, right? Mm -hmm. In in there, you kind of get one or the other, right? And so this was no different. Like, and we were like, it's oh my. the chimera of uh, trainers. Right? <laughs> right. I, I was like, this is where I could could capitalize was being the first club to really help people figure out what strains were best for them by diving into the science behind the plants. Now, I did that, I love it, and so I love to hear you talk about it because um, this is how this is what made me get all into it and fall in love with it. Now, where I'm a bit tainted is I also was a part of all that, saw that was even the very first place that actually tests the place, Steep Hill, which is the name of the company that first started doing lab testing for all it. They're the most well-known uh, in all of California as far as that goes. Like I know all of those guys and was been around all that and seen how, how that process works. And there's a lot of latitude still. The, the, because this thing is still up and coming, there's not... There's not a lot of regulation behind it. So, you know, when they talk about THC and CBD and percentage of this and that, like the amount, there's so many ways right now because it, we, it, then this is why we have to go through this process because we're not there yet where it's, it's being really, really regulated, you know, regulated, not for a sense of control, but regulated. So, you know, that if it says on that bottle that you're getting 2% CBD and because yeah. we're trying to more get more competition, there, will do that. Oh, and it's happening. Yeah, I mean, I've already seen that. that since I've left, the evolution has been crazy. Uh, so, I'll tell you why. I mean, when you, so when you brought this, yeah. when you, the very first time you brought the, the edibles and yeah. you, and it said them, I was like, come on, like, there's no way all those will be even, uh, but I was like, oh wow. And for the most part, yeah. I can tell that they're all very consistent. So it's easy to measure, um, um, it's easy to measure and test edibles. It's harder with plants because yeah, you could have it's you oil. Have, it's, it's oil versus yeah, no, it's, it's yeah, because you could have concentrate. It's way you, those are accurate. Well, but people don't realize this. You could have a plant, and one section of the plant has a different, a slightly different percentage than a bottom part. Or you could give them your best bud, and then that's what they can use. This to, buds for you. Yeah. So so this is what we started also in this area where we we were the first ones to bring the the wax and I mean it's been through so many right earwax peanut brittle, uh, glass shatter. Uh, now now the purest form is clear, right? So um, Yeah, see that stuff I consider just straight up. I, I could definitely some medicinal We're uses for those. We're working on invisible. <laughs> there's, <laughs> there's definitely medicinal uses uh, for those strong, strong concentrates. But I know a lot of people that just they just use it like a drug, and it's just a lot, man. Oh yeah, well that's it's just stupid. Now now you're going too far, I think. Oh absolutely, that 100. That's why I've never been. Uh, I'm intrigued by it, and we we produced it and we made it. But it was something that I was like, oh hell no, there's never a need for me to ever be that high. Like that's I feel like, like you should have snapped when you said that. <laughs> oh hell no, no that was, <laughs> yeah. that's just. I mean, I, and I have you know. I remember the very first time I did, and, and I think the, we were one of the first ones to bring some that was like seventy six percent THC to some of these clubs around here. 
And I remember trying it the first time, and it was just way, way too much for it's me. It's not good. Yeah, no, it was cloudy, and then I got a headache, and then it was just, it didn't feel good. I was like, oh, that was... But I mean, now in I think some people well, have just high, such high tolerance. Yes, and that and that's the reason. That's how that gets passed, and why they will allow it, and will keep going that direction. And especially since with cannabis, there has never been a death, so you can't really overdose. The worst thing you're going to get is really fucking high, so, you know what I'm saying? and have a headache. That's, and, and that's the problem. The problem. That's part of the problem. The other problem is. Can you overdose on THC? You can. Uh, edible with a sh- ridiculously high amount. It's extremely unlikely. However, if they keep going the route that they're going, yeah, right. I could see some fucking <laughs> idiot well, buying th- five bottles of the strongest shit so you can buy and taking them all. So this is why why we're in this transition still, just like alcohol back in the days. We're in this transition right now of all these things getting tightened up. And once that's all tightened up, you're going to see it all go. And you're seeing states already happening where they're they're taking the risk first. Like maybe it's a little bit, and then some states are kind of waiting behind a little bit, but eventually it all goes. Well, right? you can see- Eventually the- it all goes. It's a no-brainer what we know now. There's enough science that when you put it up next to tobacco and alcohol, you can't possibly keep those two things you know, eat or legal and not allow that so to here, be So here comes the, here's the juggling act that they have to figure out. Will the increase in use of cannabis, because if it does become legal, you will see a spike in use, of course. As it becomes legal, there's lots of people who will be like, oh, cool, I want to try this, right? to smoke it or whatever. So there will be a spike. Whether that spike stays elevated is, is, is up for debate, but it, you'll definitely see increased use. So now you'll have, you know, I don't know how many more millions of Americans who now are consuming cannabis. So the question becomes, is it more expensive, costly, and dangerous for you know, five more million or however many more million people end up using cannabis, or is it more costly, expensive, and dangerous for us to maintain the war on drugs and to keep cannabis in there? That's the big debate. Now, because cannabis doesn't kill you, it's non-toxic, it's never killed anybody, and because uh, cannabis addiction is relatively rare and people who are addicted to cannabis, and there are, you know, people do go to, you know, treatment centers for, for, for marijuana, it's not the same problem as alcohol addiction or anything like that. So if you're addicted to marijuana, you're probably not crashing your car, you know, beating your wife, you know, you're not you're probably not a complete degenerate. You're, you're pretty chill. But but it de- it's definitely can happen. Uh some of the side effects of cannabis if you use it uh, at an earlier age, so if you're adolescent and you smoke a lot of weed, it does result in lower IQ later in life. Uh will people be less productive? All that kind of stuff versus jail, right. cost of jailing these people, uh, manpower that's spending time on people who smoke pot when they could be spending time on violent well, So there still like has that. to be like the, the same kind of standards, like you're 18, you know, plus or like, you know, having it, that will 21 happen. or, you know what yeah, I mean? Like for sure, yeah. for sure. It'll be, uh, it'll be at least 21, probably higher, like 25 for some reason. Some States have done it that way. Um, but I definitely, definitely do, when it comes to just marijuana, there's no fucking way in hell that legalizing it will be more of a cost to society than keeping it as a schedule one drug. Of course. No that's, fucking way. In that's hell. no, and that's the reason why it's been so hard not to, because they it fucking make too much money off yeah. of it. The amount of people that are in prison over it is I'm just- I'm buying is, stock in video games. Is, <laughs> is stupid. Like <laughs> that's, snacks. it's crazy. Yeah. And so I remember going through and I remember finding out and learning all this and it was like, all of a sudden, I, w- I became this person who was super anti to full blown into it, understanding it, seeing the direction of being a part of it business wise. And then I flip flopped on the other side after doing it for a few years and realizing, like, oh man, where the where the real business is at is in producing it and growing and learning. So, and then I when I started to dive into that and had opportunities to see some of the most awesome, amazing grow rooms and facilities up and down all up and down California, um, I wasn't really impressed. There was a handful that I thought were solid, but even some of the best of the best ones I saw when I started to talk to whoever ran the nursery or whoever was responsible for it, uh, their explanation of it was pretty, I was like, Mm -hmm. whoa, huge opportunity here. And so that's where I started diving in and like, and real quick, you find out that there's a very, there's a a great, uh, I mean, literally uh, cannabis, the way uh, when you look at it nutrient wise and how you take care of it, very similar to the human body. Mm. If you just, the, the three, there's three major macronutrients for the plant that are super responsible, just like protein, carbs, and fats. You have all your, your phyto, you know, everything else is very similar. And, you know, feeding it just properly will make the body, just like the way the body runs so much more efficiently when all those things are balanced and when it's stressed, it shows you things. I mean, the, it's crazy. It's like I saw so many parallels 
to the human. I all of a sudden got fascinated with that, mm. like because it, it, it went so. Cancer unlo- life forms, man. I just, <laughs> you didn't know that. I just pictured this weed yeah. plant, like talking to Adam. Hey, ooh, yeah, we're yeah. the same. No, <laughs> no, not at all. Like that's not yeah. that same. He's like, I'm going keto, but I know you. I know you totally get me and understand. Yeah, my course, macros. you know, because you you understand both of them on that level. That there's a lot of parallels when you think of it like that. So I got very just like I get into like building a physique and mm-hmm. building a body, and I love that. Uh, I also got very fascinated with producing the healthiest, strongest plant because that produces the best THC. Oh, you got into it, man. You yeah. made it, you made uh, it yeah. into your, your fucking science. Yeah, yeah. No. Yeah, I mean, for me, it was uh, just, just fat as I dug deeper and I saw these studies on, because it was this real famous study done in Spain on, uh, on rats with uh, brain tumors. And um, I was just blown away. That was one of the first studies that showed it had anti-cancer. Actually, one of the first published studies, I should say, because the government actually demonstrated some anti-cancer properties in 1974 and then shut it down uh, so nobody would see. But uh, th- when I first saw that and I started learning about uh, what cannabinoids were, yeah, how the body CDs, made its own, yeah. that's bo- the body made its own cannabinoids. And, oh, did you know breast milk, breast milk contains you know, endocannabinoids that the baby you know, ends up you know, ingesting and that there's all these receptors throughout the entire body. It's one of the most abundant receptors in, in, the, in the human, uh, you know, G protein coupled receptors in the body. When I started learning about all that, I said, oh, well, now it makes sense because when I would hear people say, it helps my stomach, and then this lady over here says, it helps my headaches, and this guy over here saying, it helps my yeah, eyeballs. It's all anecdote. And then. I'm like, get the yeah. fuck out of here. It can't help everything. I think you guys are just <laughs> <I know>. <laughs> You guys are making shit yeah, up. Yeah, that's how I feel. Like, magic plant. Like, yeah, that's like the hippie thing, right? Yeah. Oh, it's like a super plant. And some I people, know. they push it and talk like that. Which, uh, you know, I, and then I you w- got the tie-dye and the fucking minivan. Which know. I would check those people too, because it's like, you know, again, you know, we're splitting hairs on a lot of things. But the fact, what I was just so blown away to me was just like, how is this illegal? This is hilarious. Yeah. It's hilarious that the amount of things that we allow us to all, you know, between pharmaceutical drugs and alcohol and tobacco alone right there. Bro. And, let, and, let me and the amount of the, the shit that we're putting in our food now, like, okay, we allow all that shit is not a big yeah. deal, but then you're going to crack down on this fucking plant that what, makes people hungry and sleepy. Like, get the yeah. fuck out of here. Bro, if they can't, if they can't <laughs> patent them, like, it. like, enjoy things for it, a minute. Yeah. If, who was it? Was it Chris Rock that said they don't want you doing drugs? They want you to do their drugs? Yeah. Like they want you to take the drugs exactly. they sell you. Pharmaceutical. Yeah, they don't want yeah. you to take your own. It's well said. It's it very is. well said, but it's, it's, you can't, I mean, let me put it this way. Uh, if coffee were discovered today, it would be illegal, 100%. Hmm. If coffee were discovered, it contains a psychoactive. I didn't even name coffee. I was listing yeah. off all these things that we just think nonchalant about. That's what I'm saying. Dude. Do you know, you know how many people are hospitalized yeah. every year because of caffeine? It's in the it's in the tens of thousands. Yeah. Oh, wow. if, if 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 coffee were discovered today with its psychoactive stimulant called caffeine, if we'd never seen caffeine before, by the way, imagine if you never seen caffeine before and someone said, "Hey," try and just it. ran the test on it. Right? No, no. So someone came up to you and said, "Hey, try this," and you tried it for and the first time. All of a sudden, uh, you'd be like, yeah. "Whoa, well, this is crazy!" Are happening. Right? Psychoactive, got addictive properties. You can for sure overdose on caffeine. Caffeine is oh, yeah. lethal at something like twenty times the effective dose, something like that. You're 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 dead, right? Uh, for sure it'd be illegal because you can't patent it. You can't. The, the, the government would be like, oh shit, this is a natural plant. We better ban this fucker. <laughs> but if yeah. they invented caffeine, you better um, believe they'd be like, new ADD drug, yeah. new whatever drug. You know, yeah. this is so... It's just the fucking way it works, man. No, it is. <laughs> but, I, I, you know, and the that... First, I think, and the first time we all met... But uh, you and I started talking yeah, about can that. We transition it, uh, out of marijuana. Well, we are now. We are out <laughs> of it. I love the topic. Yeah, right. <laughs> we, we we are out of it now because this is. But this is actually a to me a very important big piece of actually how Mind Pump came about. Because I tell you what, yeah, there I, was yeah. Sal, Sal, Cloud of bong smoke. I talk. <laughs> I talk to. I talk to any tra- any trainer that's worked for me, especially if they made any sort of impression on me. I'm pretty good about still remaining in contact, and I have always for a very long time. I still mentor a lot of trainers that uh, had worked for me, and so I I talk to um, these these people, the, these trainers that work for me. But there's a lot of people that work for me and worked around me that I don't stay in contact with. And Sal wasn't even somebody I worked with, so there's no way that I'm gonna like. I don't have the capacity as much as I would like to, but I was so fascinated with where your mind was and where you were in your life and how much we are alike. And that was one of the first things that I kind of tripped out on. And then that it's, that's what started it all. 
into like, well you know what i find interesting is that uh because let's see 500 episodes we've recorded that's got to be at least 500 hours at least right because some were shorter some were longer oh, oh come on dude. uh at yeah, least 500 doing, yeah two two and a half now with these interviews yeah it's, it's got to be at least 500 hours yeah. but uh not to mention what 15 episodes that what is it now released? two it's been two over two years mm-hmm. uh, yeah, almost we, two and a half years almost two and a half years is it really 2.5 now yeah almost. almost almost what's it what's what's fascinating to me is that and i'm not this, you guys know this i'm not this huge like i am kind of spiritual but i'm not right I'm, i go i, I kind of you flirt with i it. flirt with yeah. it right but what's weird is that we all not only did we all work for the same company at the same time we all worked for the same in the same like area yeah. and we all worked in the same clubs it's like right when i would leave a club yeah you guys would get plugged into that club or something like that right yeah, yeah. we all had f- friends that were mutual that either that worked for me and then worked for you or vice versa or something like that right yeah oh, and we never met I never. I had met you guys in the sense of I don't I'd think seen, I, I'd, I'd seen you. I'd yeah. seen yeah. you. I'd seen you at kickoff meetings. That's it. Yeah. But we didn't like. Hey, let's go high. No, no because we were at any time that we were at meetings like that. You we were, were in different districts. We were in different districts. Right. Yeah. Right. We and, competed. Our, our 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 districts competed. Yeah. Um. And uh, I don't even think I'd ever even seen you before, Justin. Right. So, yeah. Uh-uh. But so what's weird is we had never met before, and we ended up meeting much, much, much later. Uh, and I, you know, I think of that and I think, well, I wonder why, how that, how that, how that happened. And, you know, I don't know if mind pump would have happened had we worked together and known each other back then because of how different I think we were oh, yeah. then. Yeah. Because when we started mind pump, we were so ready for the direction we're at now, you know, the direction well, we started. You had to mind develop pump. and create, you know, your own, uh, your own thing, your own baby at the point with maps. And I feel like we all had our own journey to explore. Like I went off and, and created my own business and figured out how to make a sustainable business for myself and what that looked like and, and, and basically worked when I wanted to work. And I had it just like completely automated and, you know, and then I connected with Adam again and Adam was already crushing it over here. Like he had moved on and then went into the marijuana business. And, uh, I kept, I was like, I just know what Adam was capable of. And I was just like, I was always kind of like, like thinking about, I was like, "Ah, I gotta get, I can't get a hold of Adam. I wonder what he's up to now. I wonder if he's like ready to do something else, you know? Cause like you said, you know, at some point it's like you, you get into something and you're like, okay, I'm killing it. You know, at, at one point, do I do something different? Did what, did Adam call you? Or did you guys talk about starting a podcast before we all started talking? No, we didn't talk about a podcast. Not yeah. podcast first. So when, when, when we had done maps and put that together, a podcast was one of the, it was a book and a podcast. Those you guys the, threw that around? Yes. Podcast for sure. Was it John Lee Dumas that gave you the idea or the guy that did the, uh, I don't, you know, so Doug, so Doug was really you, into, had you even listened to one yet? I had never listened to a podcast, but I knew what they were. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I listened to, I'd seen clips of podcasts on YouTube cause I like to watch Joe Rogan's like rants and stuff on, oh, YouTube, but yeah. I never listened to a full episode. And, uh, and, and, uh, Doug was really into the internet marketing world and he knew that there were different ways of getting, you know, your brand out there. Right. Cause what happened is as an unknown trainer, I mean, I was well known in the Bay area, right. In my, in my small circle, but if I have a, develop an online program you need a lot of volume and no one's going to buy anything from someone unless they have some kind of authority when it comes to fitness online and i don't look like a fucking pro bodybuilder i could get pretty lean but that's about it. it's nothing spectacular so i don't have that i'm not like supermodel good looking i don't have you know where i've already built another uh, you know i don't have a name right so we thought how can i develop a name or, or or get my authority out there so people will believe me and then try out this fitness program and so I knew I liked to talk. And so we had talked about doing a podcast. That's one of the reasons why we did videos for, uh, for maps as well and put videos in there because I like to, to talk. So that was one of the ideas. And then when, when you and I got on the phone, Adam, and I started talking to you, I did not realize that you – I knew you, were, you had some charisma, but I'd never really talked to you. But when we were on the phone, it was like boom right away, right? We were just back, 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 back and forth. And uh, I was like, oh, shit, po- like – this podcast, like yeah. a podcast would be fucking amazing. And I was afraid when I first met you guys, actually I had told Doug when I went to go meet with you guys at your house. And I said, look, I said, I think this is, this is a f- amazing opportunity. I said, I talked with Adam and right away, incredible chemistry. I could talk to that guy for hours. I think it would be great on podcast. I said, 
you know, he's also got uh, somewhat of a social media following. He looks the part. So at fucking worst comes the worst. I've got a buff, good looking dude that it could promote and say that, you know, maps is a good program or whatever. So that would be good. I hadn't met Justin yet. And when I met with you guys, uh, obviously right off the bat, we all hit it off. We were talking for hours. Do you know that Katrina has that conversation recorded? We got to listen to that. I have not heard that. I've never heard we need it. To listen to it. <laughs> so I she put it on. She snuck it on her trip. iPad and and she told me afterwards. And I never cared right afterwards to listen to it again because we just fucking had it right. And there's nothing important. Mm-hmm. But it would be cool. Now. It would be cool now yeah. to so see what, if I what the audience. Uh, cool. I don't even know if we told the audience this. What they don't know was so when we sat down to talk, we all had our ideas uh, of what we want to talk about uh, on a fi- on a fitness podcast uh, the three of us and actually there was four of us because Craig at the time was a, was a part of it but the three of us in particular really um, we all had a passion for uh, doing fitness the right way mm-hmm. I remember we were talking about that like there's a lot of stupid shit out there and they're being sold crap and people are hurting themselves and they're not getting healthy and like and we were talking about like we we have a message and it's the right message and we think if we deliver it right people will it'll resonate especially because at the time we had really we had a scene that the that that was the 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 way that social media was taking things was was real was being connected and real uh but i was afraid when i met you guys like okay i wanted to talk about the wellness side of fitness and i'm like okay here's a couple guys that you know justin looks like a, a fucking collegiate football player, right? He's a fucking big dude. And Adam's a fucking pro physique competitor. Are they going to want to hear me say, I think we should, you know, I think the, the direction of fitness is to meld wellness with, you know, aesthetics, right? <laughs> yeah. And I, re- I remember when I said that to you guys, like melding wellness with yeah. aesthetics, that you made guys, perfect sense. You guys were like, absolutely. Yeah, that's yeah. exactly what we want to do. I know. You, you're probably like anticipating that. We're like, whatever. Yeah, I thought I, thought I was going to have to sell you guys. Yeah. I thought I was going to have to sit there and sell you yeah, guys. Yeah, no, I was already, already thinking like that. I was yeah. already a trainer who like, you know, and, and it was because I was on one extreme, which I'm. I, this is another thing we had in common. Like, dude, I sold the shit out of supplements. I got yeah. everybody on supplements. Yeah. Like I, as a trainer, well, for you like, had to. I mean, that was the mandate. Yeah, well, I mean, the, we took a shit ton of supplements. Yeah, and I took that I, too. Yeah. I took you guys. When you talk about to build muscle, bro, I've taken everything from yeah from eight, <laughs> 18 to twenty five. <laughs> anything that's been on the market, I've pretty much tried. Right. So I Niagara? and and I and and the whole time I remember like reading, 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 like and like you know, and I and I I would dive stuff that I was really into. I was wanted to build muscle bad, trust me. So I was like, and I was a trainer, so it was like I'm not only am I learning my craft, but I'm also f- learning for myself, you know, to be honest, you know. And that's where I was. So I was diving in and trying everything. And that's also why when I really started to dive deeper and realize, you know, the way these studies are put together to, you know, to put this spin on these supplements is really bullshit. Like, and then, and then when you, you started re- putting it together, yeah, when you start yeah. to break it down mathematically, as far as like how much that could improve and change your client's life, yeah. you realize like it is so, there's so many other things that oh, you, yeah. that are so hard already to get them to do. And to like, well, think about that in the beginning, how, you know, going into the first couple shows, there was like this, this weird, like, well, what are we going to do with this? Because, Oh like, yeah. You know, like we're talking about supplements and they're like, well, there's still some merit, you know, maybe creatine. There's, there's, you know, a pre-workout kind of formula. If we put it together right, mm-hmm. you know, you can do that. And there's still a lot of justifications made, you know, initially because it's like, well, do you guys remember when we went full, uh, fucking when we went full on? Yeah, uh, fu- remember that? Yeah, we yeah. did a whole episode around. We it. did. We had so we were we, we were like, like like throwing them away. And well, shit. here here's the problem. <laughs> That's like, great. Here's the problem. When we started, that mind, was awesome, when we started yeah. Mind Pump, we talked about this. Like, okay. We're going to start this podcast. Uh, it took off really quickly. And we're like, well, we're not going to sell anything for a long time because we want to make sure we, you know, our audience knows that we're legit, that we have integrity. You know, uh, you know, we want to do a really good job. And but we always we would have these meetings like, well, f- you know, how are we going to monetize if we don't sell and promote? So like, th- that's the moneymaker. Yeah. And here's well, the- this time we're all working. Such a big decision. Yeah, a lot of people don't like know that. Realize, you know? Well, all we of worked, us- we worked for yeah, up yeah, until re- recently. Yeah. Up until recently, we weren't. We, we used were to working. meet. We used to meet for the first year together. We used to meet two times a week, right? Sometimes three, but most of the time, two times a week, where we'd be together for about four hours and we'd do multiple episodes, talk business, do everything we need to do, and then and go then, and then go do our job, our regular yeah. jobs. And uh, so we we it was difficult because we knew that's the way everybody made money. But we have here's the thing, and here's why we sold supplements so hard when we were trainers working for the big gyms. And I, I and I put this together recently. 
it was A, because we took a shitload of them ourselves, but B, when you have a lot of integrity, you can't sell something unless you f- buy into it. Mm-hmm. So it's I know for myself, I made myself buy into it because that's what I needed to do to sell it. It's almost like a mind game. Oh yeah, you play with yourself because I can't sell something unless I, I I buy into it. Well, so you know, so you know, what, I have to believe in it. I'm not a bullshitter. When yeah. when I realized this, right, then I began to unpack it, right, and see like, well, then how did that happen to me, and then why why did I get bought into it? And then you start, and I go like. Man, like the way the system is set up and the way like somebody who enters into the fitness industry, it's really, I mean, it's- Do you remember it, the five components? It's like, it's, yes, the, that's, why that's where I'm heading with <laughs> so this. The five, yeah. five components yeah. of fitness. Uh, you, These are the, the ones that we were, were, yeah. we were trained. Yeah. Supplements were number two, bro. Two. Oh, man. Yeah, added to the top five things. Supplements are number two. Crock Food number shit. one. Supplements number two. Oh. Uh, ca- cardio number three. Resistance, resistance training, training number four, yeah. personal training personal number five. Training number five. Yeah. So I mean, you were. It was pure yeah, that, bullshit. That's horseshit. Yeah. It was pure bullshit. But and it, and we knew this. And we actually had a meeting. I remember we all stood around each other. And I think we might have been, even been on the phone. It might have been a conference call. And I was going off. I was really like, you know what? F- you know, fuck this. We're gonna fucking go after supplements. We're gonna t- fucking just no holds barred. Fine. We're never gonna get sponsored. Yeah. But whatever. And again. To my, not to my surprise, but to my delight, my co-hosts were fucking more down than I was. Yeah. Adam is like, oh, fuck, yeah. let's buy supplements and post the fucking picture and tell people how shitty it is. And, yeah. fuck. and I'm like, well, we got to be careful. We're going to get sued. <laughs> yeah. We can't do all that shit. Like, uh, again, it was and to I'm my like, delight. Fuck the system. Actually, in fact, I'll tell you what, uh, here's, this, this will go, this will go deep. The first time I really truly knew that I was with uh, a fucking, uh, just a gangster team, like a badass group of fellows, was when we had recorded, and a lot of people don't know this, and I'm not going to go into too much detail because I don't want to put anybody on blast, but we had recorded the first 15 episodes of Mind Pump with our buddy Craig. Craig, uh, so we had 15 episodes ready to go. Hard work, we're real proud of it. He says last minute he can't do it anymore because of his sponsors or whatever. I was deathly afraid, and Craig at the time was the, had the, had all the social media pull. He had more social media pull than yeah. than any of us, yeah. and a lot of us. And I know we had kind of dependent on that, like, okay, that's how we're gonna get our start because Craig's at least got some kind of a foothold yeah. to get it out. And, there. Yeah, yeah, and he was tied with Bodybuilding.com and Sell Your Core. Yeah. Those were big. Those are those big, are big companies. Yeah, those are big companies. And for us, it was everything, right? And so him dropping out last minute, we can't release the episodes. We can't use that anymore. And my fear was that you guys were going to be like, well, I guess it's over. Like, we're not going to do this anymore. And I got on the phone fully prepared, mm-hmm. fully prepared. Doug knows this because we talked about this. I actually talked to Doug about this before even all of us talked. Oh, really? I, uh-huh. I was fully prepared to try to convince you guys to keep up, to, to, do, to, to do it again. Yeah. Like, we're going to record 15 more. I was like, okay, I was prepared. I was going to do my thing. I was going to do my motivational leadership thing. <laughs> I get on the, I get on the fucking, I get on the, Tony Robbins is shit. I get on the stuff. phone, I get on the phone and Adam's like, fuck that. We're going to do 10 more. And Justin's like, yeah, I'm glad you said that. Me too. And I'm like, wow, <laughs> <laughs> this is fucking great. Like yeah. I was fully, it's crazy. I thought for sure yeah, that great. that shit was over. You <laughs> yeah. know what I'm saying? And we kept going. Oh yeah. There was no hesitation. I didn't doubt it. Yeah. yeah at all. You know, and, and you know what? It's, it's, it is funny how things all worked out and played out because, uh, I don't think uh, there, I don't think you could do this show with four people. You know? No, it's too many. Yeah, yeah, you know, no matter how great and because and, and not to mention, I will I, attest and, to that. And I think that it all, yeah, right. You can barely squeeze <laughs> shit in as it is, right? Yeah, no, I, I get enough. Like when, well, when I want to, when I want to, you know well, what I mean? Like and, it's perfect. And I remember that, and I really, I remember, um, you know, one of the times afterwards, and this is why I know that it was all, it was all meant to be, right? And so here's what you asked the question the other day, right, about fate, or do we believe that? So it's pretty funny you asked that, and then we're talking about something like this because this is like one of those situations, like well, it's crazy how that worked out, was that that didn't happen exactly how Sal said it, and then I remember too thinking like, you know, after one of the episodes, you know. Uh, you know, Craig is 100% like a leader, just like one of us. I mean, he's he's got that uh, leadership about him, and he is definitely this. He's one of the most impressive men, uh, businessmen oh, the guy in the, the fitness yeah. industry. I've never met anybody Savage. that works so hard. Yeah, yeah. That, yeah. I mean, he is, uh, you know, a smart cookie, dude. Like, and we, I knew it right away when I met him. So the way we met, I met Craig through a mutual friend, and he kept he kept telling me all the time, "I got to meet this guy." I mean, yo, he's my, and he's his, like his best friend and they went back, they knew, knew each other from back East and he kept telling me that we had to meet and he'd been telling me this for like a year and a half, two years and he never told me his name 
And I actually, I know who I'm in the fitness industry. So I know who Craig is. Craig has, and he's on bodybuilding.com and he's on Cellucor. And if you're a tr- guy who gets on bodybuilding.com or Cellucor, more than likely you're going to have seen Craig at one point. He was the face of Cellucor really. Right. And on bodybuilding.com all the time. So it was so funny when I saw him, I recognize, and you, you can't not reckon Once you see Craig one time, you will always recognize mm-hmm. him, especially with that hair. Right. It looks like Conan. Yeah, totally. Yeah. He's, he's very unique. Right. So I remember seeing him go like, oh, I know who this motherfucker is, right? And I was totally, I was totally jazzed to meet him. But I have to say, when I first met him, I thought for sure he's going to be like a lot of the what I was meeting in the the, the men's physique and bodybuilding world. Dumbass. Yeah, not the yeah, not the smartest, not the, not the <laughs> smartest group as a collection, right? Keep so it simple, dumbass. He he uh, was actually yeah, he was very intelligent. In fact, he was a, he was a, a trader before he was you know he was a, a, a day commodities tra- trader. Yeah, right? yeah, commodities trader on Wall Street. Like before this, so the dude is a smart cookie, right? And a very savvy, and man, we just we talked all night long, and it was we never actually touched fitness. We just talked business. Oh, I thought you were gonna say touch body parts. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't think we. I don't think the first night we <laughs> did that. So that's and so when we hit that off, and then I I knew the pull he had. That's why I was you know I'm the one who brought him over to all of us to be possibly on the podcast. But then when I realized there's no way as, as strong of a personality as his could have fit on this show, he's a he's already strong enough to carry a lot of things all by himself you know what yeah. i'm saying and we're it was it was too much in in one room i don't anyway, think so. i don't think i definitely think our paths will cross again oh, I in agree some too. way i think so i too. definitely do but no i mean it all it all happened exactly the way it, the way it was supposed to i mean the fact that all of us all four of us have z- had zero knowledge of this business of podcasting mm-hmm. none of us had ever done a podcast None of us knew what the business of podcasting was. We, you know, Doug had equipment because it was his hobby. He had a lot of fun with this kind of stuff, but he wasn't a professional producer. We were just trainers, um, and we did it, and it came out. And you know what's funny? I don't think it would have worked had we not been that way, because if you listen to, especially a lot of our earlier episodes, which, by the way, I'm, you know, how many, what percentage of our audience do you think has listened? Past like two hundred, like before. 200. It'd be interesting. Most of our for, most of our forum is. I know. I know. Yeah, you know. They're, they're so you the, could do the percentage off of that because most of the forum is is listened to all of them. Right? Yeah, but they're the they're the more hardcore. You yeah. know. So fans. if I were to go by that and guess the numbers, I would say you know maybe I think five percent, maybe of, right, five, maybe five ten percent of dude. Them. Some of our early episodes were. <laughs> and it's because we had nothing to lose. We didn't know any better. Um, yeah, we, we definitely went, feed off each other. Yeah. It became we went crazy. We went fucking nuts like some of the episodes we recorded uh i mean we recorded the, and you know sometimes we, we were, were nervous exploring conversation and sometimes yeah. we were nervous so we would we'd go to doug's house and we record in the living room and we'd be nervous you know because you're excited you got in you know doug's got everything set up to record so you like walk into this like production right so like oh fuck we're about to get on yeah and uh and then we used to intro the show so that always fucking was stupid right it right away it would start us off on this awkward kind of tip well, I, so we would drink yeah or we would smoke. I have to say, though, that I feel Adam was the one that opened the floodgates for crazy. Oh, my God. <laughs> he started talking about sparkly taint and, like, what he did to clean his asshole. And, like, <laughs> oh, that's right. Doug, you had to share. I was all. Doug, you had to share huh? your, fir- your first experience. <laughs> Doug tells, tells this story. That's where we're going. When we were all, so we were at. Yeah, because Doug only knew, obviously, he knew me. This was, like, episode number two or one. Was it one or two, Doug? It what was, was one it? of the ones we recorded. the first day we recorded, yeah. yeah. It was at your house, Adam. Yeah. that was, a, And he was used to my level of crazy, which is I'm, I'll, I'll go after people and I'll attack controversial subjects. Yeah. I'm not crazy in the same sense you are where you'll talk about <laughs> yeah, blowjobs, yeah. assholes, yeah. like crazy shit. No holds right? bar. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, Sal, you know, is he can be very professional, as you can see on the on the show. And when I first met Sal, he was very uh, proper. And so I knew Sal from that that <laughs> venue, right? <laughs> I didn't expect this thing to escalate oh like it did. <laughs> <laughs> so Sal, yeah. So when Adam started talking about the sparkly taint, I'm sitting there. Okay, it's interesting, but <laughs> I don't know how well received this is going to be by the masses. <laughs> and honestly, over the yeah. over the years, I was nervous too, Doug. I was nervous yeah, too. I, I, I was could, on I your could side. see Justin was, was on your his side. head down his hands. He's going, yeah. "Oh my God, what did I get?" Uh, you know what's funny? I was scared. When, when, hey, when you were going off, I was like, "Yes." <laughs> Uh, yeah, yes, I know. Oh, okay. yeah. 
There was I, we, I saw a twinkle in your eye, oh, and I was dude. like, "Oh god, there this, were is where, few, this is where we're going from now on." There yeah. were a few nights of sleep. I think me and Adam had. You guys miss you. I, I, I remember what you guys would. You guys tell us. I don't know, guys, how we feel, and yeah, you know, because we went hard, yeah. Yeah. right out harder than we might even go now. Well, I think we. Oh yeah, we well we went the show. I think too, to be completely fair. I, I mean. I, I think we're um, much more comfortable now. And then was uh, part of that was trying. That's where there's, true. there's no trying now. Like it's, yeah, we're spitballing. Where, yeah, I think that. So I think that uh, <laughs> that's what you get, right? You get yeah. that when we're we are trying material. We're trying Dropping to. Dropping F bombs every time. Yeah, yeah, trying the shotgun. And, and you know, that's probably, the, you know, uh, looking back, you probably think that, okay, that was probably a lot of nerves. You know, like yeah. I had a, a lot of nerve. Even being guys that are comfortable outgoing forward, you, you'd be probably lying to yourself if you were doing something you've never done before. And that's. To, it's fucking weird. I'm not. It took me a long time to get used to talking into a mic, speaking like I'm speaking to lots of people, but yeah. looking only at one motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> I just it feels weird. You know, it took a while for that to kind of. So you know what's funny for me? Like talking on the mic felt extremely comfortable from the gate talking, hmm. but it was afterwards that used to fuck with me because oh, yeah. because I get when I start talking, I get into a flow state very easily where I I, I zone in. I talk and I just go, and this is why I've always been accused of having a big mouth, mm. because it would it's always gotten me in trouble. If I'm in a if I'm on a, in a conversation with something with someone, excuse me, and it can be anything, it could be politics, religion, like the like the the subjects you don't touch. Mm. I'll get into it and I'll just go, and then it's afterwards I go fuck I shouldn't have I shouldn't mm-hmm. have said that, but it's just coming out. And they so still make up words. There, and, and there <laughs> were there were times where we would have episodes where we would say shit, and then afterwards I'd go home. And I'd be, th- and this is the early days, right? And I think of myself you start like, start analyzing it like I'd be crazy. Like, I'd be like, 500 people heard that, or I know. a thousand people heard me say that. See, thing. that was you, but that was me real time. So, <laughs> like, I had this instant panic, you know. And then sometimes it would fuck me up, like as we're as we're talking, and you guys figured out right away I'm not the opener, you know. Like he found out right away because I was like, oh. Well, like you had this like moment of like danger. Remember, you know, you're gonna say something wrong. Remember, Craig tried to organize that, <laughs> where yeah. he was like, "Okay, so we make equal Just time for each open. person. Yeah. Let's have you know, Justin gets to open this time, and then next time, you know, we're gonna rotate like that. It was like, like, hell, hell awkward. <laughs> yeah. And Justin's like, "I don't want to open, dude. Don't, don't wanna... do that to me again, guys." <laughs> yeah. He's like, "I barely like, don't even want to do this uh, shit. Much yeah. less be- open yeah. it up, bro. Well, Come it's, on. It's, you know, I'll tell you what. And it's yeah. so funny because I totally, I know uh, Justin. Like, so we." we've been together for a long time just i mean, just like you and Doug go back yeah. before us and so yeah. i know his strengths i know what he likes to do i know he's aware of that i know and so yeah. when when uh when craig was like wanting to like stick up for him so he gets more mic time and i'm like i don't think my boy wants to <laughs> just, no man just i get like, exactly I what i want when i want it dude. yeah that's the, just I mean, like i don't want to sit down yeah. and write content fucking all day long man yeah. that's fucking i don't know that's not me at all whatsoever well, what's what's also trippy because i i like to sit back and just kind of analyze that like the show and what makes us do what we do and why we like to do it and it's you know, it's like we've talked about this before. It's confessional. It's therapeutic. Mm-hmm. If you listen to the to Mind Pump for a long time, you can one hundred percent tell what's happening in our lives. You oh, can there's tell. A, there's an entire story timeline. You it, totally process. You yeah. can see when we're frustrated, when we're stressed, when we're happy, when we're into a new subject, when we're you know all of us are discovering something new about fitness or health or awareness or whatever. Or we're it, just working on something. It's yeah. like it, it comes out. That's what we end up talking about on the show, and that's why. I like to listen back to old episodes sometimes because I'll be like, oh yeah, that's when we... I haven't done that in a really long time. Oh, it's it's cool. And you know, I'll tell you what, the amount of uh, personal growth I think the three of us uh, have gone through because of Mind Pump. Oh, absolutely. Is insane because it's really what it does when you're you're talking on uh, on a microphone and you're trying to be yourself... It's imagine talking to a therapist, uh, uh, you know, every single day, right? Record four episodes that are about an hour, an hour and a half long, and you end up talking and you end up getting deep. You end up getting deeper and deeper. And in order to do that, in order for you to do that, you have to really self-examine yourself. And because it's recorded, here's the funny thing too: because shit is recorded, you're more aware of the fact that you're going to try and bullshit yourself. Oh, absolutely. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I can't make That's up... That's the coolest some... thing about it. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I can't bullshit myself because this shit's on It's on audio. And the other part you can't bullshit is because once the podca- podcast starts to get big, 
you can't lie about shit because people are going to run into you and they're going to know. Yeah. They're going to see. Like, I'm not like, if I'm not working out right now, I'm not going to be like, I'm not well, going to lie and say, I'm, oh, yeah. I'm so fucking bummed. I'm not going to have right you guys now. load plates and then we take a still pic, you know? Yeah, because then I'm going to run like into that. someone and they're going to be like, whoa, you look like I don't well, need to do out. stuff that's a facade. Well, if you look at this, right? If you look at it as a business, it's our, it's, we knew that this was also going to be our biggest secret weapon, too, was our ability to be real to be truthful and to be that information to really what to put out the most content first be real truthful and and as as factual and for sure as we can be and if anything that we learn and then we learn new that contradicts something we said in the we past, go back and we go it. right back out we and yep. we talk about it and we, we address it so it's like I feel like that really puts a lot of pressure on everybody else that's in our industry. It's like mm-hmm. if you're list, if you're listening to Mind Pump, there's a, and you're talking about anything that's new that's coming into health and fitness that could really benefit you as a consumer or somebody who's wanting to be healthy, be in shape, and and continue to grow and learn in that area or in that arena for yourself or for whatever reasons, mm-hmm. you can get bet your ass you're going to be able to find if it. If you're you. popular and you're in our industry and you are an influencer, we're going to watch what you say. Yeah. You know what I mean? There's that that sort of, I don't know if that's a fear or if that's a blessing for some of you out there, but that's just one of those things. Like we assess each other all the time constantly. And so if we're putting out shit information, we better address which it. Which by next. which by the way is not <laughs> it's not easy. No. It's not easy being the one that's being assessed. You know, and we it's all stressful. We all do it, and we all call each other out on shit all the time, and we're all uh, okay with it. Uh, it doesn't mean it feels good. It doesn't mean that you like it when it's happening, but we respect it. And it's not like I'm, you know, I'm not going to say to Justin, you know, fuck you for saying that about me. <laughs> I'm going to be like, fuck, man. Yeah. Okay, let me just. I'm going to listen to what you're saying because, you know, I respect your opinion, and because that's that's our brand. And if I don't live this brand. Mind pumps not going to. What was what pump. was the quote yep. you gave the other day or that uh, Jess gave you? The oh, seek, seek pain. A bad day. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, well, that one. A bad Should day the for the ego, ego is a good day for the soul. Oh, yeah, I love um, that. and boy, I'll tell you. Just speaking personally, you want to talk about ego checks? I've had more hmm. ego checks and reality checks and more uh, realizations and growth, which comes from being uncomfortable, in the last two and a half years on mind pump than I think I have in my. I mean. And you've held it together, man. It, it, uh, like I'm seriously though. Like I, you, you've you've done a lot to show me how to get through that kind of adversity, and so I, I commend you for that. I just want to say that it's thing I appreciate it. And uh, uh, but it's uh, this. I think this show, for me at least, has been more than business. It's been uh, uh, therapy. It's been a rock for me. It's been uh, a place where I finally have. Uh, you know, I have a venue where I can express myself and it's, it's, it feels good because I know I'm helping people. You know what I mean? I, I, or at least I hope to be helping people. It's not coming from, from a bad place. I mean, to, to, to see some of the messages we get, I mean, we don't get messages like, and we do actually, no, we do get messages like I lost 10 pounds. I lost 30 pounds. My bench press went up 50 pounds, but a lot of the messages we get, we get have nothing to do with any of that. Most of the messages we get have more to do with, I had an eating disorder and now mm-hmm. I'm feeling much better or I feel much better about my body image now or I stopped taking these these you know fat burners that were making me sick because of you guys and you know I really questioned my relationship to food or you know I, I I'm able to get me and my wife exercise together now and so our marriage is better like shit like that and it really makes me feel really good about yeah, what we deeper. do yeah. to the point where I would do this for free I mean it's true if, yeah. if, if something happened and there was no business in what we were doing well, I think I'd we, get another job but I still want to do this I think we always uh, agreed that because at the, at the end of the day uh, Mind Pump is Mind Pump the podcast right Mind Pump Broad Truth but you know now you see Mind Pump TV and uh, ultimately the parent company is yeah. Mind Pump Media like I mean we're barely scratching the surface of where this is going and eventually it'll be very realistic that a majority of our time won't be spent behind the mics or behind the camera but I honestly think that I'll never want to completely stop this because of the for those reasons mm-hmm. because of that uh, I feel like we've we've used it as a, as a platform also to grow mm-hmm. and it's been that beneficial so it'd be mm-hmm. silly to me I almost seem to completely not do it right like no I, never I don't think we would ever transition out of it completely no never and the uh, the, the changes that we've gone through while we've while we've been doing the show I mean I, I'm just thinking back to some of the transitional moments when we started Mind Pump, uh, you know, do you, you guys remember? Of course, you, you remember your transformation, Justin. Remember that? Yeah. Remember when we surprised you <laughs> oh, on yeah. air with? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I 
<laughs> well, I mean, let's be really transparent, right? So there was a little bit of a, hey, man, we were going to do something, you know, before <laughs> this episode, you know. So there's a little bit of a forewarning there, and I just was like, okay, I'm going to roll with this. <laughs> yeah. And uh, and those, okay, so I just, attribute it to so, a big part of our a momentum at the very beginning. Huh? Yeah. Oh my God, are you kidding me? Yeah. You we, think? we yeah. we 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 did well, that we, in the CrossFit episode. We you, well, uh, the CrossFit episode was first because yeah. we just came out guns blazing, but we uh, and when they were responded to us was fuck i couldn't believe that i could not believe when crossfit came after us for that episode yeah, yeah. i was like thank you for the free publicity we're gonna I know. Another, we're gonna do another episode uh, and hope it gets you. worse yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like we're not scared at all no <laughs> this is perfect we're, we're coming back like but, next episode but you know justin uh we were we were all you know obviously at the time we were starting to sell the maps program we're like okay we're gonna start presenting this to our audience and uh, we're like, God, what better way than to have one of us, yeah. like, get fucking like shredded or fit <laughs> or whatever on it? And at, at the time, I was like, you know, I think I was like eight percent body fat, and Adam was like, you know, he was competing, so he was fucking ripped all the time. So I'm like, well, we, we're gonna have to get like, we're yeah. gonna have to go up and then go back down. Yeah. And they're like, Justin, be perfect. <laughs> He'd be perfect. Yeah. <laughs> He's got some fluff. <laughs> he could totally do uh, it. Uh, and you were not, and you were also the least likely guy to 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 present you know your physique so it just it was perfect well that's what right. made it really exactly and well what i think it was it was important for that too uh, you know from a f business reasons right so you know one of the things that we all know for sure is that you know this is i mean it's it's something it's part of the reason why our our youtube channel is going so slow is because we don't take our shirts off and do pump up videos like that like you know, we could do that. I could do a photo shoot. We could do that and do yeah. all that cool stuff and put it out there. And no, but it's 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 not us. Yeah, it's I mean, like, none of it's not. And so yeah. Justin was perfect for that. He couldn't be <laughs> further from that. Yeah. And I wish I like, knew it. Be more uncomfortable with the process. We got to find the episode that was on as an early episode, but literally on air. Uh, I'm like, hey, Justin, uh, me and Adam want to ask you, want to talk to you about something. <laughs> like an intervention. Like, it was like, and so we, yeah, we presented it. Me. We literally presented uh, to him this transformation that he would go through. And he would document it using maps. Yeah. And of course, Justin's a fucking gangster. Well, he know, didn't skip you, a beat. He challenged me, yeah. uh, you know, and I, I, I look at it as like, well, you know, I got to show these guys. I'm not like, I'm not afraid of doing things outside of who I am. You know, like that not was a all. challenge that was like, all right, this is where I can, I can contribute and I can show the team, you know, <laughs> I, like I'm a team player. Like I'm going to do this. I fucking hate this, but I'm going to do it. Maybe our fans will get something out of yeah. this, you know? What do you, what do you think you get? What do you think? What, what has been one of the greatest challenges? I think somebody even asked that, right, Doug? Mm -hmm. We have one questions the from the forums. Yeah, yeah. Like when you think, when you think of like uh, hurdles like that, like that was a major hurdle, right? And probably yeah. a growth spot for you. That was a growth spot and that was hard to manage like, that was extra effort that like normally I wouldn't have to account for, you know, that I'm like, I had to be really savvy with my time management. And, uh, and so I was, I was still seeing quite a few, uh, clients at the time too. And then we were doing this and then I was doing that on top of that. And I had a family and two kids and my kids were really young, uh, you know, at the time. And, um, so yeah, I had like, Everett was like one, I think, but yeah, so it was, I mean, I w it, there was just a lot going on at the time. And it kind of went against your fabric mm -hmm. because you're so anti, you know, train and diet to look a certain way because you're right. very much like, fuck that. I want to be able to move a certain way. You didn't it, give a shit about it that. It makes me ill inside. You know, <laughs> yeah, like, you know? <laughs> I have that kind of weird aversion to it. I'm just like, I've cared so much about. Uh, it, well, I'll be that guy. I'm the PR guy or the, yeah. the guy that like shows off doing something super cool. But like, for some reason, it's just never resonated to me to be the, the pool guy. You know, I don't know. It's just not me. <laughs> and, and the thing is, it's fine. Like I, like I always told Adam and like, I totally respect everybody in that world. And I always appreciated, you know, the effort that it took. I just was never, that was never something I wanted to pursue. Well, I mean, you did it and you did so, fucking great. You can yeah. go back and see uh, some of those pictures, I think. We might even have them on the website. Do we, Doug? Oh, they're still on the, whatchamacallit, right? Um, they might be on Facebook. I'm not on, sure. On the Instagram Inst page? Instagram. Instagram. Yeah, on yeah, the yeah. Mind Pump Media yeah, Instagram page. Bottom. You'd have to go way at the bottom. Yeah, maybe we'll re-upload that. Yeah, just, yeah, yeah. Re yeah. Them up Throw there. back Thursday. <laughs> <you know>? <laughs> <laughs> I'll just start blasting that one forever. Yeah, what, yeah. For, uh, for me, God, easily one of the biggest challenges for me was... When we started Mind Pump, I was uh, towards the end of my marriage, right? But I was still married. And uh, 
we, you know, I, again, I have a big mouth and of course I discovered you guys do too. And so we would go crazy on the episodes and it really, really, really rubbed my, uh, at the time, my wife the wrong way. Really, she did not like some of the topics that we talked about and she would get very, very angry with me and we'd talk about it. And it was, you know, it was like, do I change who I am Mm -hmm. uh, because of this or do I just stay who I am? And really the only difference between me on the podcast and me on th- off the podcast is on the podcast, it can reach more people. But that's the way I talk on the podcast. And anybody who's ever met me will tell you, this is the way I talk to people. If I want to talk about a subject, I'll talk about it. If I'm going to use a curse word, I may use it depending on my audience, but you know, it's not a problem. And so it was, uh, it was what well, that caused me some stress because, you know, you start thinking like crazy, you start thinking a lot of different things. For well, you're example, probably afraid you couldn't be yourself. At- well, it's uh, I knew I was going to be myself. I was afraid of what that meant. Oh, yeah. What did it mean that I would? Because I knew I couldn't stop it. As soon as I turned, as soon as I went, started talking, it was just going to come out. Mm-hmm. And you know, what did that mean for uh, my marriage at the time? And also having kids. I'll tell you what. You know, this is digital. It's safe. It's out there forever. Yeah. You know, knowing that at some point soon, you know, my kids are going to be able to listen to me talk about sex and drugs and you know all kinds of crazy different topics and you know am i going to be okay with that and uh what's you know and i i did i did realize that uh and it was a it was a source of stress for me mm-hmm. but then i thought about it and you know what kind of a relationship do i want with my kids right. i want that's the kind of relationship i want with my kids because i'm not being irresponsible i'm not an irresponsible person i don't advocate uh people hurting themselves or doing things that are going to damage their bodies or their minds or whatever um, you know, and so I said, you know, this is how, I, this is the kind of relationship I'll have with them anyway. And how cool is it going to be for them when they're old enough to listen to podcasts or whatever, that they're going to be able to listen to this and be like, oh shit, there's my dad. Like ta- that's how he talks to his buddies. Like, I wish I could do that with my dad or, yeah. you know, my, you know, how cool is that going to be? So that was a big, I'd say that was a big moment of, of challenge for me that once I overcame that, uh, uh, just a huge piece of stress mm. left my body and allowed me to be free. <clears throat> That's funny because your what what was causing yours was also causing mine. And one of my biggest first growth with all of us as a team. And I remember I totally remember having this conversation with Katrina. So um, I'm really blessed that I have another an, a partner that I can come home and I can like like intelligently bounce things off her and like her advice is fucking really sound and solid and non biased and challenges the way I think and so. It's uh, it's refreshing that I can come home and I can do that. And I remember when you were going through all this and when you went through the divorce, I was having a really hard time because I know what it's like to go through something heavy, heavy in, in a life. I've been through a lot of shit and I can't imagine what you were going through. And I remember n- knowing like, you know, I know he's half distracted, you know, and I know that I don't have all of all of Sal. And I'm like, I remember telling Katrina this and she's like, well, why don't you talk to him and you tell him? And I was like, no. And she's like, why? I don't you, wouldn't you want, wouldn't you want him to tell you if, if he felt that way? And I said, no, I, I think, I think I, I res- I would want him to respect me so much that I know my shit and I know that you're not getting all of me and that I will, you know, I will figure the shit out. I'll figure it out. Don't worry. And I remember, and I remember she going like, well, what if it, what if it continues on or what if it, get-? I said, well, that's just it is I don't think it will. And I don't, I don't think I need to. And I think that, you know, I would want that exact same space from, from him to allow me to do that. And I said, and at the end of the day, I would take Sal at 10%, then 99% of the men out there at 10%, at 100%, you know what I'm saying? So I remember that was a, that was a big thing for me because I, as someone who's, I've always been so, like, the hardest thing for me is pulling back. Like, I always want to push. I think we figured that out, right, all these years now we've been together is... <laughs> I He's push. a pusher, not yeah. a receiver. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I, I, I know I apply a lot of pressure on all of us, including myself, you know, to because I and I know because I know the capabilities of everybody in this room. You know, it's very, very special. And especially when it's when it's moving all in the same direction. And it just it's impossible when you have somebody going through that for them to be working at their fullest capacity at what they're doing because they're just not a hundred percent present because you can't, mm-hmm. you know? And so I think when I when I made that realization that like how much I appreciate you know who you guys who I work with that 
that would never be something that uh, I would allow to to bother me, and it was a major a that, major. That's a um, that's something I think uh, you have to learn when you work with other with your with people who are your 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 equals. And I don't mean equal on every sense, but I mean in sense of respect and uh, you know self startership and you know all of us work hard. None of us are lazy. None of us you know uh, want to fail. All of us are extremely success driven. And it's difficult because it's you don't find as many people you don't you don't find a lot of people like that all at the same time. You'll run into one here or there, but they're still pretty rare. But when it's one big team, you know, uh, it's you have to you have to know that the other you have to trust that the other person is going to be that way. Like put yourself in their shoes. I know what I would be thinking, right? And I don't need nobody to tell me, right? You know, I'm already beating on. myself up enough on on not being able to deliver at that. I've, you know, what I'm saying so Exa- it would only it wouldn't do anything. It wouldn't do anything. It wouldn't do anything. That's exactly what I said was like. It would not make the process any better. In fact, you know, respecting him and giving him that, and you know, and that's a hundred percent what happened. Yeah, and that's totally what happened. And that's been, uh, I think, that's been an ego check for all of us in, in different ways, right? Uh, because we all have our strengths and we all have our, uh, you know, relative weaknesses. And I say relative because compared to each other, some of us are stronger at some things and than others. And that's another thing that it's a, it's a another growth period is learning when to step down, you know, knowing when to let the other people take control because Mm -hmm. they're better uh, at these things than you are, or they're, this is their level of expertise. And that's difficult when you've always relied on yourself being that person. Yeah. And it's not so much like your ego is like, I have to be the one that's always doing these things. It's more like, I've never really been in a position where I, you know, where I could just trust that the other person is going to not only do a good job, but 10 times better than I'll do. Mm -hmm. And that has really, that's really turning this team into something that I've, that's fucking awesome. That's pretty amazing. And Mm -hmm. what's, what's crazy about it and something I'm going through right now uh, and learning right now is that it makes things, believe it or not, as hard as we work and as stressed out as we get sometimes, it actually makes things sometimes feel seamless because people handle different aspects and we all trust each other to the point where it's almost like, you know, you almost feel like you have to be busy to feel like you're doing something. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just got to be busy. That means I'm doing something. When in reality, we've done more work in less hours than I've ever done in my entire life. I I always worked bell to bell every Mm -hmm. single day. Mm -hmm. I was forced to learn not to through... My my divorce yeah. process and having you know, having my kids now yeah, you know, shuttling and all that all yeah. that stuff right I was forced to learn that but the reality is the amount of shit that we actually get done and have done in a short period of time is pretty astounding and uh, it's exciting to see where that where that can go um, and you know true to Mind Pump we love to share you know our 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 process and what we're learning from this is more about how to build a successful business in fitness. And I, I I feel like at one point, and I don't know if it's happening sooner or later, that this is something we can share with people in fitness because mm-hmm. the two biggest problems that we talked about and have identified from day one, and one of them we've attacked like crazy and we're going to continue to attack. Number one is the fitness industry is just 99% of the information is bullshit. It doesn't make people healthier. doesn't make them more fit. It doesn't make people feel better. It's not an answer to the obesity epidemic. It's actually part of the problem. And so we've been attacking that. But there's another part that we haven't, that we're, we're going to tackle. I feel like we're going to tackle at least, which is, you know, there's a lot of very passionate, good people with lots of integrity and lots of talent who want to be in fitness and make it uh, their living make it a part of their life. And there's not very many ways to really do it unless you sell your soul to the devil. We're going to yeah. help that problem. And that's yeah. and I would love to help that. I I've met so many That will be our next major pivot. There's a hundred and there's no doubt in my mind that will be the next major pivot. Yeah, I business. see I agree. Yeah. 100%. The, really it's just when it will happen because I know there's there's other things we're trying to accomplish first, so but there's no doubt that and when you think about it that feeds into all of our wheelhouse better than anything that we've ever done together. Mm-hmm. So everything that we've done and created to this point that is by far in even closer to everyone's, you know, expertise I, and what I, they're really good I've at. I've just known know? some incredible yeah. trainers. I've known some incredible fitness leaders who left the fitness industry to do other shit, use their skills in banking, you know, or some bullshit like that, which well it's fine, it's fine industry, but they could have really been effective at helping people but the reason why they left is 
it's you can it's it's it can be a hard industry to earn a good it's living. It's massively in. corrupted. Yes, it is. I mean, that's just once you get to the top and who owns or who has the most money in this industry. Supplement industries, magazines. Mm-hmm. You know, what I'm saying you talk about that. Even it's the gyms, just frustrating. Yeah. Even the top. You don't gyms. see like really super awesomely educated personal trainers like where do like there's no like like level like that unless you can buy in with the supplements or go in with you know some gimmicky bullshit or you create a gym franchise that just takes everybody's money for not showing up so i i mean the pinnacle of it is is ugly and we want to be able to get to that pinnacle to change. I'll, and, and I'll, never, a- I'll never forget climbing the ranks at, uh, at 24 Hour Fitness. And then, uh, and then I had uh, invested in my own gym and really, truly understanding the model. And I could see the direction things were going with the big box gyms. And the model is 100. We've talked about this many times. It's, it's super clear. Their goal is to get as many people to pay them a monthly fee that's low enough to where they don't cancel. That's the key now. It's got to be so low that someone says, ah, eh, it's only 15 bucks. Who cares? Yeah. Low enough that they'll keep it and that the people will never use the gym. This is 100%. So what they do is they design- it's predatory. What they do, and I, when I realized this, it fucking made me sick to my stomach because I never saw gyms this way because I loved, you know, I worked out all the time. I was always consistent. Yeah. And, I, and it was one of my passions. But when you look at a gym, really what a gym is, it's a big showroom, okay? It's like you're going to a showroom to buy a car, except you never get a car. You walk in, and the way they design it is to present to you something so that you can pay for this membership. So they put in there all the shit that attracts people to buy: uh, the gimmicky circuit equipment, the shit tons of cardio, you know, the the, the new class. It's a fad. Oh, Tybo's out. Boom, we're gonna put that in. Oh, body pumps out. Boom, we're gonna put that in. You know, even the machines and the free weights are designed to 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 like you don't have a free weight room that really looks like a free weight room. Usually, mm-hmm. it looks. Like, again, it's a showroom. Mm -hmm. And the goal is to draw you in with this showroom. You pay for your membership. You come a little bit. And then you never come back again. But you don't stop paying your membership. Yeah, because you feel guilty because you know you need the gym in your life. Because you don't eat good all the time. You don't work out very much. And, you know, once, maybe twice a year, you feel guilty. And you go. And they know this. And that's why they're going to just market to your insecurities and just hammer you on, you know, how ineffective you are and how lazy you are for not making it. They, a lot of people don't know that if you if actually ever and this is all gyms unless it's like a private club right that actually manages this but all gyms if every if every member showed up you would be way over the fire marshal like you there's no way you could fit everybody in the gym and that you wouldn't be allowed to. So isn't that funny? There's a business model where if actually everybody showed up, which is po- humanly possible, right? It yeah. is possible if organized. If you have a membership, everybody show up on the same. They would not be able to. <laughs> Why fit you, we should do that one day. Right? <laughs> that should be one if of we our were, protests. If we were Joe Rogan big, oh God, I would that'd be try awesome. And, if we were Joe Rogan big, imagine, I would try and organize like, that. Every that single person, hilarious. Yeah, <laughs> that shows up. Oh actually, my God, a fire company. Why, why not? Everybody yeah. who has a gym membership show up on Monday or whatever. We should pick a date. And if if they won't let you in, get a refund. End of this like year, and like next year, I want to do that, dude. <laughs> we got to be big. Operation shut we, down. We, <laughs> next shut year, down the all right. You got to be. Pretty Let's make a now. vow. Next year, we make that happen. That oh my epic. god, dude! You want to talk about burning some bridges? <laughs> We've got some, some of our mentors and stuff who run these gyms. I know. Yeah. So, so I, great. Well, and here's the thing too. So the, then there's the other side of you where. As much as uh, you didn't like it, I, I respected the business side of it. I mean, it's, uh, it's brilliant marketing. It's it's uh, you know that was one of the blessings of coming through a, a company. Which and twenty four doesn't have the greatest of names now. Now I when I hear trainers coming up now talk about it, they kind of snicker at it. You know, I was mm. hanging out with Connor and he was we were sharing old stories and he was telling me you know he's what is he five six six years younger than us? Yeah, he's thirty. Yeah, he's yeah. So he's six six to eight years younger than us. So he, when he was coming up, like it had already had a bad name. You know, it's like it's people that are kind of ever after Mark Mastroff sold it. After that, it was yeah, never it was, looked well, at, never looked at the same. Right? I'll never forget when they when they started making the switch. They uh, it was run by so Twenty Four Fitness had people who owned and run the gyms uh, were uh, there was a heavy fitness and sales side. This is how Twenty Four Fitness was born, right? It was fitness. The people loved to work. The, the, the guys who owned it and ran it, whatever, loved fitness. But they also had a strong sales side. So they combined the two and it became very successful. And uh, at once they got to a certain size, they thought, hey, we're going to bring in a retail CEO 
to run the company to run the company like oh my god you know god that was so yeah like this guy from pepsi or this guy from home depot or this guy from wherever Mm -hmm. and the problem with that is they came in and they looked at the model and said hey you guys have you know at the time i think it was 300 locations or 400 locations you guys have more gyms than anybody you're open 24 hours your gyms have are more equipped than the average gym all you got to do is charge cheaper than everybody and you'll win you'll just you'll just corner the whole market and that sounds like that'll work right it sounds like a fucking great idea unfortunately for those of us who worked in gyms as trainers uh and you know sales managers we knew that was bullshit that's not going to happen nobody just fucking joins a gym you got to sell them on it and you got to at least show that you care a little bit i mean you can't just you know go balls deep in the whole fucking sell memberships and nobody show up type of model but that's what they did and as a result the average price of gym memberships has gone down considerably because when i was selling memberships back in you know, we're talking uh, 99, 2000, 2001, 2002, you know, an all club 24 hour fitness membership was like $45 a month, yeah, $300 a join. It's a lot cheaper now. Well, and what's happened, yeah. and, and this is common, right? This is just common in business. When you, when a company sells of this volume, right? it sold for like two point something billion dollars. Like, so especially if it was, if, it, if it's private, like, and this goes for anything, this is not just fitness. If a private company goes to this level, like to a billion dollar company, and then it ends up selling the first thing that the first CEO comes in and, and does is just cut costs everywhere. It's so easy. Because, oh, I, I couldn't, because when they started any, doing that, oh my God. Oh yeah. Well, anything private, anything private that's grown that large, just the likelihood you know, and of course there's outliers, but for the, the likelihood of business is actually kept. I mean, and we know this firsthand growing the one we are right now, like as the, as the number grows, you start to like care less about all these little things. And when you have a business that's growing and that you're so focused on it, building, building like 24 was doing, you know, every day it was like, what were we building a gym every week or something crazy, crazy like that yeah. for years. So when you're growing that fast, you can't even staff the places fast enough. So as far as being able to like keep up with, uh, you know, exactly how operation is being ran like so you know you have people that you have three people that one guy could do all three of those jobs you know so right away ceo comes in assesses that and goes okay we can cut all these cut all these positions put that into one silo okay we could take that position that position and make them chase commission by this much more but reduce their salary and it'll look like we're incentivizing them to make more money but in reality we know yeah. by looking at last year's P&Ls that we can take we're we're going to save 10% you know what I'm saying and so the next thing you know this CEO looks like a champion and so when people are like working for their like in the company right now they're listening and they're going Wait, like I, I don't know what you're talking about. My boss says our like twenty I guarantee if there's someone who's in twenty four right now, they've heard the spiel, how great it is and how it's doing better than probably what it was doing when we're talking about right now. But right. it was probably it's probably doing it with a tenth of the person. I remember going personnel. through that whole process in like <laughs> the the AC, like no AC all of a sudden and all of the windows are like steamed up and then the, the place was dirty and yep. then the pool was really dirty and it's just like like what's happening you know you just start realizing we just don't have the staff anymore we don't have the capacity here to you know keep up and and, and, and like they were cutting all these well things. yeah what well, exactly that's what that was that was we knew that as a company when you have 400 locations and you keep the temperature two degrees hotter that results in a, a, a pg e bill of one thousand dollars more a month right. over four months. Hey, we can we could sell we could save ourselves four hundred thousand dollars a year, you guys, just by making everyone sweat their dicks off a little bit. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> no, it's true. So that's what they do. You yeah. know, it's crazy when it gets to that level. It's true, and you know what people don't realize about a gym is what makes the gym is the people that work there. One hundred percent. I will debate this with anybody, although I doubt anybody who's ever run a gym will even question this. It is 100% about the people, and I've said this a million times. You could give me the shittiest fucking gym in the world, and I'll I'll outperform the one down the street that's that's fucking amazing. It's the culture that's inside that. I've done that many times. When I ran Sunnyvale, which was one of the oldest uh, 24 clubs, when I ran that motherfucker, the pool was... Many times, emerald green, because the shit was broken. In fact, yeah. that's how I sold it. Hey, we have an emerald green pool. Uh, <laughs> we had, a luxury. Yeah, we, the, that's like a pond. It's yeah. tropical. Yeah. Enjoy. The fucking yeah. roof. <laughs> so, the, yeah. the roof caved Mark in. Mark Cucci's a type of guy. a really over, friendly swamp monster in Go there. over and get like a, yeah. a blow-up palm tree or something and put it out there next to it. <laughs> <laughs> did he tell you? He must have told you what we did. <laughs> Uh, the, the, the roof, Sometimes you'll see frogs. the roof yeah. caved in several times. We had dumbbells that didn't match machines that would break. I had a guy once, I'm not even bullshit you walking on the treadmill and he reaches up to change the channel on the television 
and the fucking TV falls. <laughs> And he, and he catches it. Oh, my God. He catches it. Oh, I was, man. I, I was in the club. Like, like one of the yourself. big ones? Was that like yeah, one of the, the big, big heavy boot? ones? Yeah. Oh, my God. That's when TVs were boxes. Yeah, they're I huge. Was, I was giving a tour at the same time. <laughs> By the way, this was was this Sunnyville? This was Sunnyville. I, I'm picturing oh, like a little no, skinny Indian so guy catching a TV right yes. now. Oh, yes, <laughs> it was. So he's walking on the treadmill. I'm with a client, and I hear I hear like something like 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 the TV shaking. I look over, and it falls, and he catches it. And you know, hey, you know, good for him. He was able to walk for a good <laughs> good five seconds before he lost it. Oh. So I actually held it for like five seconds, and I'm watching him. He bails, TV fucking. <laughs> so I'm like, quick thinking. I'm like, oh shit, we're uh, gonna get sued. Oh right. No. So I I run over to the OM's office, the operation manager, and I grab uh like a waiver, and I run over to him with a clipboard, and I'm like, you're paying for my TV that you just broke, and he's like, what? Because he's like on the floor and shit. I'm like, you just broke the TV. I saw what you did. You see the sign? Don't touch the TVs. You're gonna pay for the TV. He's like, no, no, I don't, it wasn't. It fell. It's all, and we're arguing back and forth. I'm like, here, I tell you what. Sign this, and we won't we won't charge you for the TV. And it was <laughs> you're so gangster, dude. bro. But they uh, they owe me money. I saved you, motherfuckers. I know, right? I that saved is, you guys a couple. That's, oh, that's at least a yeah, oh, that, right no, there. that's at least a fifty to one hundred thousand dollar lawsuit, right yeah, there. Yeah, I sure. made a side away side a form that we had wrote on that said basically, uh, you know, it's his fault. He admitted fault and whatever. No, oh my, we weren't going to charge him for oh the television. Oh my god, that's yeah, so funny. yeah, I was a little gangster back then. Um, God, a lot of stuff like that. Used to have. Well, this is, you know what? I think this is the part of me, like, uh, because at first I was mad and frustrated. Then it made me want to, like, understand it. And when I started to understand it from the business side was when I kind of softened up. Like, a part of me was bitter at that, all those things. But then when I when I had to, you know, look at P&Ls myself and had to manage, yeah. you know, I was responsible on average, depending on what club I was, from somewhere between one to three million dollars mm-hmm. worth of, you know, personal training revenue and another maybe, you know, quarter of a million dollars in ancillary stuff, right? So, and at all times, you have 15 to 25 employees that you were managing. So when I started, had to look at all those things, I understood why the company and business would go that direction. But I remember the last, you know, four years of my career, I was totally, I needed to. You guys hung in there, man. I I fucking, I bounced out of there way. A lot, everybody did. I was one of the last ones to stay, dude. You were the last of the Mohicans. Yeah, I did. Because you know why? Well, what I, and I meant this when people would ask me, because of course, and I know you guys are the same way too. I mean, I was a trainer there for fucking almost 10 10 years. Bro, I made my bones there. Well, think about this. I I bled purple. That's Yeah, you got loyalties. I used to say that. Well, not only that, but you guys, I'm sure you guys got plenty of job opportunities by clients that used to to train and stuff. I used to get that all the time. And even more money, and I remember them like looking at me like, "How much money you make here?" And I'd be honest about where I was at, but I would tell them that in order to get me to leave this situation that is was so good for me, you know, as even though I wasn't growing, I wasn't very happy. It still was. A, I'm not a stupid guy either. I was like, "You're making this kind of money, Adam. You're doing. You're still saving money doing this. You've got your house. You got this. Like, and you work in a gym. And I, yeah, it was and a I, fun and I loved cool it. job. So I had a yeah. number in my head that. I would only leave, like I would leave all that to chase a dollar for this. And that's what got me to finally leave was I completely chased the dollar. Once I left something I was passionate about, I left to chase a dollar. Then once I captured the dollar, then I realized, oh my God, like, that passion I back. wanted the passion back. Yeah. And that's what drove me back into fitness. And I started with the whole we love to hate Adam.com thing and the boot camps and all that shit. And then when we all met, man, it was, the, nothing has felt so, um, there's nothing else I could potentially want to do for the rest of my life. There's no doubt in my mind because what I love about this business is there's there'll be so many businesses within it right. that I'll gil- I'll be able to feed that feed that monster inside me that needs that because I totally identify with Mike when he said that build it up to burn it down. I would build something up just to prove that I could do it and be successful yes. at it to do something else, you know, and so. That to me, like where we're at, what we're doing, and because of the 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 vision is is so grand. There's plenty of that in within this, so uh, that excites me so much. Yeah. It, it's uh, it, it's really special. Um, and I cannot thank our listeners um enough. I really really can't because you know they 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 hear these three guys talking on the microphones, and and you know we we do our thing and we bullshit, and we have a good time, and we talk about fitness. But the things that we preach and the things that we talk about, they take a, a little bit of a leap of faith because a lot of the things we say are opposite. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. A lot of the stuff we talk about, like we were talking about, you know, the, the re- protein recommendations being we ridiculous and fasting. too high for a long time. We were yeah. talking about, 
you know, fasting a particular way. We were talking about, you know, uh, you ketogenic know, diet. not going to failure when you lift weights and, and body mm. part splits aren't nearly as effective against as CrossFit, body. which is insanely which, popular, which in, in uh, took, enlightening people yeah, on hit cardio, yeah, and fasted cardio, don't take, you know, don't take supplements for the most part or a waste of your money or whatever. And a lot of people, you know, who, who it took, it takes some courage. Cause I know I was that kid. I was that kid who ate, you know, one and a half to two grams of protein a day, took every supplement, did a body part split. And if someone had told me, hey, everything you're doing is wrong, I want you to change it all, I'd be terrified of losing my gains or whatever. And so we've got, especially the early, you know, our early audience, uh, they, you know, they took a leap of faith in kind of trusting us. And um, I'm forever grateful. Uh, and we've got, we do have the best fucking fans. I'll yeah, tell you that right. They absolutely. go to they go to bat for us like 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 nothing else. Which is why, you know, even now, uh, you well, especially know, that forum. The forum it, is unreal. Even, the even, forum to this day to this day is for sure. Uh, I think what we're all most proud of because I think it's most by far. It is the the closest representation of who we are and what we want. To the point that there's been several times where one of us has been very heated. About the flow, we've kicked uh, we've kicked off what two people? That's yeah, two mm -hmm. people we have over that entire time, and they weren't like really bad. It was just that important to us that this is the message and this is what how 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 we want this to be. Yeah. Like this is the experience we're trying to make well, sure it, to maintain. And, and really, really, it's not even it's structured and strict as it as that sounds. No, it's not really, at all. It's, no, it's that's just the, that's the it's opposite just, of it. It's just varying lot varying opinions, debate, discussion. Just be cool. Be yeah. cool and respect each other and have all the different opinions you want. Um, and let's have great discussions. Disagree with us, uh, which we do. Oh, we do absolutely. get in debates with people on there. And I, I, I encourage it. I embrace it. Well, it's, it's awesome. You know what I, I find is like one of our biggest wins, which I've noticed. Um, you know, we mentioned these different, these different sort of subcultures, these different like ways of thinking about fitness, even with like that could be dogmatic. And like people always want to kind of identify a little bit more with a tribe, like an IIFYM or, you know, a CrossFit or, uh, you know, whatever other camp, you know, you want to describe. But people that like they really are protective of that camp, they still can listen to us and like understand where we're coming from with a lot of our points because. I mean, for the most part, we really try to, to present it the right way as far as it being constructive. It's constructive criticism. It's not condemning. It's like, I get it. I get why you really enjoy this thing. Or right. I get like you really want to look shredded and awesome and, you know, put yourself on stage. And, you know, I like we get it. Like we were there. Like I was... You know, I, I was probably the, the, the most intense workout guy on the planet, you know, <laughs> like I still have that inside me, but like, I'm passionate to, to make sure, you know, well, we, you and I did, you and I were doing CrossFit before it was CrossFit. Before we was, were, was, before it was CrossFit. I was, I went we through were, a phase of that. Yeah. yeah. And we were, we, and I remember going uh, training that way because it was like this new hot thing when it was underground and nobody knew what it was. It was like the, the training world. If you were in training, you probably came across it obviously, but this was way before it became commercial and people knew all about it. Yeah. And I remember it was like every, it was the talk. Everyone's talking about, Oh, CrossFit training, doing this. And I'm like, you know, I remember thinking like, I remember being sitting, I'll never forget sitting at my desk and looking it up and Googling it and trying to figure out what, the, what's this CrossFit thing one's talking about and i could at that time you couldn't even find anything how funny is that google to google crossfit and not find anything like, you couldn't even find hardly anything on it i had to really dig to get it was your buddy what austin that was doing it right he, well austin even came even later like i mean there was well, austin was the first one that got me to like really try it but before that was when we were researching and look into it mm -hmm. and i remember like you know looking at like the programming and then and then following it and doing it in the gym and i remember just being like Fuck, like that that just kicked the oh, balls off of it me. It kicked yeah. my oh, it just wrecked me. And I remember going like, I gotta work the rest of this day. I, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, I was like, I almost blacked out. Yeah, like, I, I, like that can't be good for yeah, me. You and know, I'm, like internally, I was I'm, like, oh. I liked it though because yeah. I'm competitive. Exactly. Right? Like I, I wanted, I, I had that side where I was like, I, I just want to prove that I could beat whatever fucking number you're putting in my face. Right. Like that, right. Yeah. And so I did. And then afterwards, I felt like dog shit. You right. know, and I did feel like like I wanted to die. And I was well, like, well, at least you guys tried it. I, I was at the time I was heavy into jujitsu, and a lot of the guys were doing crossfit and i was like yeah well tell me what the workouts look like and they were telling me and i'm like they're like do you want to come I'm like no <laughs> no i'm cool uh doug do we have some questions from the forum that uh we can answer 
Yeah, there's a number of questions that have come up. And, um, Why don't you pick a couple of them and yeah, we're throw them away? Yeah, we're 90 minutes into this, so we'll sure. see if we can get a few no, out we'll, there Yeah, right we'll now. answer a couple, and then we're That's good. 500. Yeah. It's special. Yeah. I think maybe this the longest one ever. I think <laughs> the longest <laughs> one we've ever done. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Strap your seatbelts. I think one of the big questions, though, that people have is the direction that Mind Pump is going from programming standpoint. What, what's the big picture look like? I think... Um, well, if we're going to be completely transparent, let's be real. On a... On a on a level where we're at right you now, always are. We we need to we need to hire on more people, right? So we're we're in a position now where it's grown that we can't we're at a capacity we can't handle it all by ourselves, right? So we need to to get pe- more people, and that's beyond even contracting work that Doug has people doing for all the behind the scenes stuff. We just need more more man or girl power, and so in order for us to do that. We have to increase more income. We're not we're not making that much money when you look at the overhead and everything that we have to do. And if we're going to hire on more people, we don't have this influx of a ton of cash laying around to do that, especially after we built this place out. This pretty much taxed us with what we had. And so now we are now we're looking for options to help create funds so we can bring more people on and grow this thing even bigger and better for what it's doing. And the main place that we're focusing right now is our where we've missed on social media. We really haven't taken advantage of Facebook and you know we're barely tapping into YouTube right now and we really got to refine that and it's and we were slow to do that because we want to do it right like we don't just want to throw shit out there like it would just like the pride we've taken in this podcast the pride that we take in the YouTube the pride that we take in the forum I think we're going to take that same pride when we really get after the whole organization of the social the social platforms and we're we're in the middle of that right now. Like our entire website's mm-hmm. getting gutted, and it's going to be changed. Because right now, this is this whole year is a year of uh, like just growth, building yeah. the base, building the foundation, uh, the, the the structure, uh, the capacity to be able to really grow uh, this brand. Because right now, our website is designed for a company that's a fraction of the size of what's ours, a, and it won't grow with us. Uh, yeah, what's that period that you know the '80s went through? What's that called? I don't know. New wave? No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, in, it's excess, right? Like, I was just hoping that, you know, we got to the 80s. Yeah. That's all. Oh, I see. I'm just... waiting. I'm no, waiting I, for that. Uh, I, I mean, as far as our direction in the future, uh, we want, we, we of course want to p- provide the best uh, fitness information in media um, to the masses. That's been since day one. But more specifically, with some other, you know, just some other areas, I, I would really like... Uh, for Mind Pump to also be a resource for fitness, for people in the business of fitness to learn how to cultivate a successful business in fitness, both responsibly with integrity, but mm-hmm. also extremely effectively. Well, talk about, let's talk about why we're, that is 100% where we're pivoting. That's for sure. But bef- we can't get there until this thing is a complete, like well-oiled machine that we can right. literally we could go her literally leave it alone and it's it's providing as good of a service to everybody and touching everybody the same way and we're just not there yet and it, before we're going to help others build something similar we have to have ours fully automated and and basic. polished yeah, yeah, yeah. Poli- exactly polished and we're in the, and we're close you can replicate it yeah, yeah we're really close and i think this is one of the major pieces that we have to we had to finish and we just waited in fact you know we hired a company and we were just in a meeting yesterday and uh, it was funny to listen to the guy giving us the talk about you know the our what, what how we're going to build the whole funnel and the social media stuff and la 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 it's going to look like this and we're all sitting there and, and uh, you know, just curious, like, how much can this help our business? And he's kind of like laughing at us that I can't believe you guys have built this without this, you know? Mm-hmm. He's, he's like, you've gotten well. that on like every aspect. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he said, you guys have done well like, in, spite, in spite of yourself. Part of that is because we, we've, this is new, completely new. We've never, none of us have ever been on this side of the business. Our fitness business experience was on the brick and mortar side. So this is very, very different. Yeah. But, but to I will say this, it's part of our strength too, hmm. because when you've never done it any other way, you go in and you have fresh eyes and you see things differently from different perspectives. Hmm. And so I think that could also be a strength. Well, really we're, sure. we're, we're, we're also, I mean, we're, we're creating. So the same way, so the way you'll know when we start to really make that pivot in the direction that Sal is saying is, you know, and we just recently talked about doing this soon, is inviting uh, trainers down to the facility for free and we don't we this is this is why this would be so unique is 
we're gonna we're gonna start helping them for free. Just building their business. Yeah, mm-hmm. to and to the whole process. We're gonna use that to get feedback from you guys on where you need the most help and what would be uh, the best way to deliver that to you. Mm-hmm. And then we'll go back to the drawing board and probably start creating something based off of those needs. And that's I mean that's really how. We go in where we see needs, and then we try and determine what those are. Make sure to, to notate, you know, the entire process. You know, we took in our approach, and you know how we would tackle all these issues. And so that's that's the kind of stuff that you know we we plan to then, uh, uh, you know, push it on and and get, give that as a valuable service for new trainers. Well, this is them. really the answer on how or how we responded to uh, with all the programs. Each one of the programs was created this way because yeah, we waited. We came a out and we came out and said something on the show, you know, talking about CrossFit, this and that. And then people challenge us. Well, if the programming's so bad, how it will? Well, yeah, how would you do it? Yeah, how yeah. would you do it, or what would it look like? Right. And we, we try to show people like you could get that type of style, the, the all the benefits that everyone talks about that you get from it. You can get those same benefits through better programming, and mm-hmm. that was like that's really what inspired Maps Performance, right? I mean, that's yeah. where we had, and then the same thing went for I talked. About how I saw all these bodybuilders training this way, and they're like their rhyme or reason for what what hmm. they did on what days was so like crazy to me, or it was just unorganized. I'm like, and then when we came out and said that, people were like, okay, well, what do you, how, what would you, okay, well, this is how I built it, this is how I trained myself to get ready for shows, and this is, in my opinion, like this is how I think it makes sense. We all, I, I presented to the guys, we made some minor tweaks to it, and that's really yeah. what made Maps Black. Maps but we aesthetic. didn't stop there, did we? No. no, we kept going. We were like, you know, what about at home training? Yes, yeah. let's talk about P90X. Let's talk about you know Beach Body. Let's talk about all these things we just get blasted on like late night tv you know that and i was like god it's you know there's there's such a better way and so you know again we go back to the drawing board and you know eventually that this well of like well all these people did it this way we're going to rearrange it do it our way uh you know it eventually that that sort of a process of like where we see things is going to sort of um, change and I think that the next progression to that definitely we're going to be focusing on fitness professionals and how to help them with business. Well, we needed all that piece, right? Because yeah. I remember when we started thinking that way, that's also what inspired Maps Prime because we right. thought, okay, if we're going to help professionals virtually and we're going to help them, yeah, because build- that's easily the program that a, tr- a trainer would use. Well, the most. Absolutely, we go, okay, how are we going to do this? How are we going to help a trainer build his business virtually so they can make? Because that's the goal. The goal is like to get to a point where we can, you know you know, help a trainer make six plus figures in the fitness industry in a virtual world, which is, we all know that's where we're going. Mm -hmm. So there's not a company I feel like that's doing a really good job of helping them. So we knew we had to first put all the programs in place. And then when we started thinking that way more often, then it was like, oh shit, what are we going to do about like a majority of the people which are dealing with imbalances and can't do some of these exercises and limitations? And how would we address that? What that, what would that look like virtually? And how do we make it simple enough to where somebody can coach that virtually Mm -hmm. and it could be super beneficial for them. And on top of that, what about the other side of the spectrum, the people that don't have much of imbalances, but they want major performance and they're looking forward to enhancing their workout by priming their body before they go into how can they benefit? So that was really the answer for that. And what really sparked that was when we started having the discussions of where are we going to pivot this company to? And we're going to see ourselves really helping out all the the trainers and those that want to go virtual. And those that are currently trainers now, maybe in a facility that eventually are wanting to dabble in the virtual world, but aren't exactly certain on what state, what steps to do that, or not certain if they can afford to build all that out What yeah. they need to is that's where we see ourselves really helping since, people out. Since this is the 500th episode, right? You know, I, I wanted you guys to know too, like, we definitely have alluded to it and whatnot, but we did create a program with Dr. Brink. And this program is like, it It basically, I mean, you get so much more detailed information in this program than ever before. And that's why we, we really... We really got a lot out of working with Dr. Brink when we were when we were creating Maps Prime. We had a direction, we had it all written out, but we just needed that last little bit of edge, you know, to that certain section where we're, we're working on our assessment process. And mm-hmm. we're like, we need another set of eyes on this because, you know, we respected his opinion. He's a movement specialist, and um, you know, he really like understands where we're trying to go uh, with our Maps programs. And um, you know, so this was just a natural thing for us to be like, hey, let's take him with us on one of our trips and let's create a program with this guy. It's going to be electric. You know, and it's, it's also one of the reasons why we never wrote a diet. Yep. 
You know what I mean? Yeah. Like we we've talked about that before. Like, uh, which that's what diet. The, by the way, the, the best selling fitness books in the world are diet. Books. Yeah, and let me tell you, <laughs> one of the hardest things, that, the biggest challenges that we've had is making money in an industry all the other ways. You yeah. know, because that is one of the yeah, easiest supplements, ways. Supplements, diet books, or yeah. you know, a new diet fad or something like that. Like we're not going to touch those with or them. gimmicky tools. You yeah, know what uh, I'm saying? Yeah, like yeah. All, these are all the best ways to make money, and we come right out and talk shit about it. So talk about yeah. giving ourselves <laughs> a fucking mountain to climb you know so <laughs> what, looking what back done? yeah idiot yeah. servants dude that's how you that's what <laughs> Sir, servants all day savant yeah savant. There's, there's no r, r. dude yeah. i know this is my library oh my bad this is my library <laughs> stop correcting himself uh, well, we talked about this well, you, know, you know somebody asked why we uh why does it say crossfit above the the studio oh sh- we're, we're all secret secretly yeah. we're yeah. crossfitters yeah no we have a uh, <laughs> we're the new brand of crossfit actually. well we don't want anyone to know like honestly we're not a public facility yeah we don't and want we, we took over a, we actually took over a crossfit uh gym yeah a crossfit box so it says which was so ironic so the sign says crossfit see now everybody fucking knows now they're gonna try it now people might find well it. i mean so part of that reason right so we have <laughs> have mirrored mirrored windows we have crossfit on the front like we do that we did that because we we aren't uh, we're brick incognito and, we're not brick and mortar i do see this place when it's finished because uh a lot of people don't know too this place is far from being finished and once it's done it'll be a cool place to actually have events or have people at and i think uh, we want to keep that kind of private and and we don't want to make it like something where people are walking in and out or people that walking by could see in so we, we are, we're not we're not trying to announce that we're here really uh, I love you guys, man. Five hundred yeah. episodes. I love you too, dude. Fucking, I look forward I to five hundred more. I love you guys. Oh, I said it. Fucking Justin said oh, it. Oh, it was hard. <laughs> that it feels weird when me. Justin says he it. Almost, he almost vomited. <laughs> <laughs> I look forward to uh, yeah. five hundred more for sure, man. Uh, same here. Five thousand more. Let's make it five thousand more. <laughs> Whoa, we'll be in Mars by then, hopefully. Hey, look, uh, mindpumpmedia.com. We're still offering thirty days of coaching for free, so you can still go there. You can still get very valuable information, and you get links to a lot of our old episodes in those in those 30 days of coaching that reference uh, different subjects. Um, also, Instagram. We do a lot of our own stuff on Instagram, so a lot of other fitness information you might not hear on the show. You can see what we're doing in our own workouts, our own nutrition. My Instagram page is Mind Pump Sal. Justin is Mind Pump Justin. Adam is Mind Pump Adam. And believe it or not, Doug has one as well. And a lot of times he'll show you behind the scenes, Mind Pump Doug. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump. <laughs>